Hello and welcome to the ultimate tier list of every single hero that there is in Heroes of Mana Major 3. I collected 176 of them, if I didn't forget like any, but I went for like a pretty comprehensive list of all the heroes and I collected all of them here and I'll be putting them into a single list. Unlike the list where I listed off all the hero types, this is gonna be like, uh, you know, going into detail of every single hero and uh, this is not gonna be like very template specific. Okay, so when I will be judging a hero, I'm gonna be judging it for like pretty much every single situation. Some heroes are good for like well, some situations, some for others, and I'm gonna be like basically putting them in the middle. Uh, what I think they are generally like, you know? So that's how that is going to be. So that's gonna be probably a lot of fun! We have a lot of heroes, so let's get right into it. Um, if, you know, we, I have something else to address, then I'll be doing it throughout the list. Let's go! So, first of all, we have Adelaide. Adelaide is a cleric from the Castle Faction, and she has uh, only advanced wisdom at the very start of the game. And she also has, like, the Ice Bolt, I mean, the Ice Ring specialty, but that doesn't really matter. She's, like, a really good canvas for any, uh, for almost any template. So, for example, you can have her in 6 Lent and A, um, HBDM1, you can even have her in Jibos Cross and any other sort of template, even Duel. And you can make her into a good hero. Um... But she's not really good on her own, she doesn't carry, she's just like a really clean, open canvas for you to paint a wonderful, beautiful hero in. And I like her, so I'm gonna be putting her probably at the bottom of A tier. Uh, next up is Adela. Adela is very much like Adelaide. She is like a very open hero that you can, you know, make her into pretty much anything that you want her to be. Uh, but uh, she ends up starting with Diplomacy, which is not necessarily like an upside. In some cases, that's gonna be a downside, because it's gonna be delaying all the other good things that you might be having, which is gonna be like an extra school of magic, and stuff like that. Um, because of that, I actually treat her as like a little bit worse, in general. There's gonna be situations where you really want the delay and you don't exactly want that late, but um, in general I think she's gonna be like top of B tier. Then, we have Adriani. Um, this hero is a campaign special hero and not available in many templates to play in PvP. Um, in terms of her general usefulness, whenever you can use her, she's actually pretty cool. Starts off with advanced fire and can immediately cast Inferno, and as a witch she also has like a lot of, um... She has a lot of knowledge, so she's able to cast her spell like, uh, uh quite often and pretty well. And the expert level of, uh, you see, the Inferno is a spell that has a pretty good amount of base damage, but doesn't scale too well. So if you want to scale Inferno, it's better to cast it more times rather than try to make it have, like, more damage. And Adriani does this perfectly. If there's a hero to actually use Inferno effectively in a game of Heroes of Mana Magic 3, it's Adriani. And she's really cool for doing so. And also, like, really thematic because she's part of a campaign, so lore-wise, she's really epic too. Um, honestly, I think she is A tier. <clears throat> Next up is we have Anion, the current meta hero for Duel. You might think this guy is pretty good, and you're kind of correct, but um, he's actually not really that great. Um, usually the Earth heroes are going to be better across like uh, more scenarios. Um, it's just that for Duel he's really end up being good because all the other better heroes are basically just not available. And uh, elementalists uh, go for like a lot of knowledge. They go learn the schools of magic easily, so they're like uh, made for perfect supports in any sort of control template. And um, yeah, with that being the case, I would put him actually somewhere in uh, A tier as well. Elementalists are generally going to be like pretty high in the list, by the way. That's going to be like a given. So yeah, dear dual map. No, this is going to be like general for every single template. Uh, next up is we have Eris. I used to, until I played Duel, I really underestimated Eris a lot, but however, having a mage with scouting um, is really, really good. He's good in Duel, and he's pretty much good in almost any other format, like you want them in Empty Firewalk, in H3DM1, 6 Lent and A. In Jim's Cross, he's gonna be like the weakest, but even there, he can be pretty useful. But as a Druid, I would uh, put him somewhere in high B tier. Um, let's go. Uh, next up is we have Ain. Ain is a wizard that starts off with the uh, scholar. Scholar wisdom? I think it's scholar wisdom. Um, so, and also she has a magic arrow at the very start. So whenever you get her in a tavern, you can teach all your other heroes that are gonna be coming out magic arrow. And with this in mind, you can actually get like quite a bit of usefulness out of her. Um, she ends up being a pretty nice, decent side hero, but doesn't really do that much. So she's not useless, but she is not really that good. I would put her in C tier. You don't exactly want to build her, you know? 
Um, next up is we have Aeson. This guy is a meter shower specialist of the undead faction. Um, Aeson starts off with wisdom and necromancy. Um, having necromancy on you is usually like a detriment to your hero, and it basically makes it harder for you to get like other schools of magic. However, as a necromancer, you're going to be almost guaranteed earth magic at expert level really early on. You put this on a hero with decent might, uh, with decent casting, and meteor shower immediately, and you get an amazing hero. In many scenarios, even when you're not playing a dead, if you're playing like an need to, I mean, like um, not a one hero template, this guy's going to be like really, really good. I like Ace a lot. He's gotta be in the A tier. So, next up is we have a Jit. Um, a Jit is an Overlord, so he already has that going for him. Overlords go for Earth Match, Logistics, and all the, like, all the other good um, skills. However, his Tonic skills are not so good. He ends up having Leadership and Interference at the very beginning of the game. Um, his biggest selling point is that he starts with two stacks of Evil Eyes at the beginning of the game. Well, behold, here's. And Beholder stacking up in the early game of Dungeon is usually the way that you get powerful on many templates. Uh, 6 lm 10 HDM1 are gonna be like the notables where you do that. And because of this, he's actually not as bad as he might seem. He's gonna be like the, uh, very usually one of the top picks for dungeon, uh, in, for dungeon players to pick on mirror templates. And uh, because of this, I feel like he deserves an uh, at least low A tier spot. Here we go. But even if you pick him, you don't usually mean him, by the way. Uh, next up is we have Alagar, uh, very famously known for his level 1 AT damage Ice Bolt. Um, spoilers, he doesn't have that much damage. Anyway, uh, this druid has Sorcery and Wisdom at the very beginning of the game and can cast Ice Bolt. He is kind of useless. You can build him into like a decent hero, but usually you would like to build someone else instead. Um, he is going to be C tier. He's not useless, but um, you don't exactly want to use him. Um, that's basically it. Next up is we have Alamar. Alamar is one of the most game-defining heroes, like, in many templates. Um, pretty much everyone knows him. He is the Resurrection Specialist with Scholar. So if you pick him in a um, control template, you're gonna be guaranteed having Resurrection on your heroes. And that is honestly amazing. He's either gonna go Earth Magic and he can resurrect himself. Um, he, and if not, if you're gonna be mating someone else like an Intelligence Specialist, he can teach them the resurrection as well. The Zero is awesome and like a very top tier pick or a top tier find whenever you're gonna be having him. And that is honestly awesome. I love Alamai. I think it's gonna be low S tier. Um, because, you know, like... Um, he's very well known, he's cool thematically, and he's one of the staple Hero 3 heroes. Next up is we have Alkin. Now, here's the thing about Alkin, okay? I learned this the hard way when I was playing a lot of mirror matches, a lot of Jeebus Cross, and I learned this from Rito more so than anyone else, actually. This is something that he taught me that I, that I still have with me. Um, consistency is very, very important for Heroes of Mana Magic 3. And while Alkin does not usually build into the strongest hero possible that you could have, you know, he's no Craghack, he's no Tazar, however, every single game, he's gonna be consistently very good. You see, Alkin is a Beastmaster, and a Beastmaster has this kind of this thing where they roll for almost every single good skill in the game. Um, they get offense, logistics, earth magics, air magics, like, uh, of course, they're guaranteed wisdom. So you can build a really, really good uh, Beastmaster, and they usually start with pretty good skills as well. However, they don't get one very important thing, one very important uh, skill in the game, and that is offense. And if you eliminate that weakness from the very beginning of the game, then you have yourself an insanely good hero, and that is Alkin. He is top of the S tier, top of the food chain, always super good. He is amazing. So yeah. Uh, next up is we have Annabelle. This is the power specialist for the gold faction. She starts off with um, archery and um, offense. So these are pretty good skills to have immediately into the game. They're going to be letting you do fights like way easier. Having speed on your pirates maybe will allow you to uh, outspeed pickets. And you also get like two stacks of pirates in, in the beginning of the game. She's amazing for very many scenarios. Um, top pick in any mirror template. And even and a possibly very good find in any non-mirror template as well, even. So yeah, good hero, um, good bonuses. Honestly, she is pretty awesome. Uh would we'll put her top of eight there. Top-ish. So yeah. Next up is we have Andal. Andal is the um, magic. He's a navigator from the Co-Faction, of course, and he has um, 
Yes, lol, in the spellbook, that is actually, like, um, a really good part about Andal. Um, one of the, actually the most notable parts of Andal, he gets immediately slow in the spellbook, so you can scholar it to, to your other heroes, you can use it on himself, and so on. Um, he starts off with Pathfinding and Wisdom. Pathfinding in the Cold Faction, of course, can be pretty useful as well. So that's like the second bonus, and then the third bonus is that he gets a Crystal Specialty. You mean that by just having him, you immediately gain some Crystals every single turn, which is like a small, but a pretty nice bonus. I honestly like seeing, him on, seeing this guy on my roster almost every single game, if I can ever find him. So, with that in mind, I would put him bottom of B tier. I mean, he, you still don't want to build him. It's just that he is a side hero with slightly more utility than the other guys. Um, I wouldn't put it as uh, anything more than that. Next up is we have Andra. Now, back in Shadow of Death, when Intelligence was, like, super busted, um, Andra used to be, like, pretty much one of the best absolute... Yeah, one of the absolutely best heroes in the game. Uh, you would get her and you would immediately have, like, instant mana by level 5, which used to be insane. These days, it's not really as good, but she's still, like, very sought after in very many formats. Uh, because of the insane amount of mana that she has. And, um, I feel like it earns, like, a decent spot on the 8th tier. This, uh, this is the first of the three intelligence specialists. Which is not generally good, but, um, I'm not sure it makes them look good, honestly. Uh, next up is we have Arlac. This is the Ballista Specialist for Dungeon. Um, he's an Overlord, so he has that going for him, and he has Offense, Artillery, as his son of skills. Really the decent skill set. I used to vouch that he is better than even heroes like Shakti, the main, on Dungeon, when I was playing a lot of Jeebus Cross. I'm not sure if I would hold like that's just strong and extreme position as I do right now. However, even like as a side hero, he's amazing. He provides you with like a 2500 uh, gold worth ballista immediately into the game when he spawns. If you find him in a tavern, that's amazing. And also you can use the ballista to do like black towers with only one stacks. And um, utility like this is hard to come by and it's really good. He can also make into a main if you don't have anyone else that is actually that good. So I would put him at uh, A tier. Arlac is awesome. Uh, next up is we have Ash. This is the first of many trash heroes that Euros 3 has to offer. She is a heretic, which is a complete garbage. Then she is an eagle eye specialist, which is complete garbage. You put garbage with garbage, you get extra garbage. And she goes in the dumpster. Uh, next up is we have Astral. Um, Astral is very, very... Uh, has very much um, in common with Adelaide. Astral is like that open canvas hero that you can build into like one of the best heroes. Or one of the worst. It's gonna be down to RNG, you know? And I like the Summit Canvas Zeros, but they're not really that amazing. I would say that um, he's very similar to Adelaide. I would put him somewhere bottom 8 there. So, next up is we have Astra. I think. Wait, can Astra or Cosmetra? Oh my god. No, this is Cosmetra. This is Astra. Astra is the cure specialist with water magics. Actually, I'll, I'll double check. Um, just so I'm not... Wait, what? Oh, this is not the auto list. Um, one moment. If I go in here, I can go ahead and do this. Okay. So, yes, yeah, this is Astro with basic luck, actually. Um, okay. I thought you had the water, but actually Cosmetra has water. My bad. Um, you know, double checking, just so I don't get anything correct. At least not too much. For dueler in general. In general. So, yeah. Um, Astro is, uh has cure and has a luck on the skill tree immediately. I think she, that she is pretty bad. Navigators already don't build into like many good things. They get like water magics and like pathfinding. These are not top tier skills. Not useless, but not the top tier. And uh, her beginning skills are also like pretty bad. I would actually put her in the D tier. She is kind of awful. Not as awful as Ash. Honestly, being in the same page with Ash is kind of bad, but um, you know, there you go. Next up is we have Axis. Axis is the mysticism specialist, I believe. Sauce so off with wisdom and mysticism. But you see, heretics are not really good mages at all. Like, they kind of suck. They have one knowledge at the beginning with the game. They don't even go for that much knowledge on the level up. So I mean, even if you, like, build them up, you're not going to be even able to cast the spells, let alone cast them well. And because of this, heretics just... Uh, they have to be really, really good if you even consider using them. And Axis is not good enough to be considered using. He is... Yeah, just like a uh, very, very bad hero. Uh, next up is we have Aiden. Uh, I've been talking a little bit about heretics being super bad, right? Well, Aiden is gonna be the exception. Aiden, the... Um, 
Aiden the Specialist for Intelligence from Inferno is actually pretty good. Anyone that specializes in intelligence is going to be pretty decent because sometimes all that you want, um, everything that you need is going to be some... some power. Okay? No, not some mana. And if you have mana, then you're going to be able to do like a lot. You're going to be able to TP around, DD around, you're going to be able to slow, meter shower, resurrect, whatever, in many templates. And Aiden just gets you there. Even without much investment, even without many artifacts. And because of this, I feel like he at least deserves um, high B tier. Despite being a heretic. So that is a, like a lot of flattery for the hero. Admit that you're a heretic-gator. Yeah, I am. I mean, what? I, I don't like these heroes. They look weird. They are weird. They don't have a spot in Heroes 3. At least like that well. So next up is we have Bidley. Unfortunately, Bidley is not available in many templates, well, in most templates, however, he is a really, really cool hero. Starts off with advanced offense, and he is the Sea Dog Specialist. Uh, he can upgrade any pirate or Corsair into Sea Dog immediately, um, just from his uh, inventory of army. I mean, yeah, that's actually an amazing ability. You can get Sea Dogs immediately into the game, they can actually have speed pickets, so you can farm those really easily, and going for Sea Dogs on Bidley is just awesome. And uh, the captains are also a role for decent skills. I mean, he is a mind base hero, gets logistics, schools of magic decently, and so on. I would say Bibli is um, probably somewhere in ATA. Um, there we go. So, next up is we have Boragas. Boragas, the ogre specialist, has offense and tactics on him. Um, honestly, barbarians are one of the best. Um, one of the best heroes in the game, okay? Um, you always want a Barbarian or Beastmaster as a main, and Boragas honestly gets you the, uh, gets the job done pretty well. The specialty does not matter too much, okay? Like, being a Logo Specialist doesn't really give you anything, um, in most scenarios at the very least. But being basically a Thyraxor, but without Wolves, still nets you a decent spot in the tier list. Uh, this is gonna be like a lot of A-tier heroes, because, you know, many of them are not too special, but still really great. And Boragas is one of them. Uh, next up is Brissa. Uh, Brissa is actually one of the most, uh, one of the best heroes in the game, I would say. Um, she immediately gets like a very strong ability to cast uh, Boosted Haste. And, you know, she's a haste specialist and any low tier creature is going to be zooming when you, when you get hasted by Brissa. She can get the expert haste like sooner than any other hero in the game. And expert haste is one of the best spells in the game. So you can see how that would be like really, really good. And also on, as an elemental, she'll also be going for like intelligence, earth magics, and so on. So she begins the game really, really strong. Um, she has a very special, unique ability that not many other heroes have. And she also like scales well. Uh, by getting some, by picking up like other decent skills, she is S tier. She is really, really good. So uh, next up is we have Broghill, the Vibe Specialist. Uh, this Beastmaster has uh, scouting and armor at the beginning of the game. He's really, really good for duel uh, because scouting is one of the top tier skills, and armor is still like pretty good. And being specialized in vibrance is also good for a duel format. However, in most other formats, he's going to be, like, not the best uh, Beastmaster around. Uh, because of this, I wouldn't put him exactly in S tier. He's really good, he can build into a good hero, uh, but he's not really that special. I would say that he is uh, somewhere in A tier. In C tier, yep. I mean, you don't really build her into a main, and uh, Scholar is, like, the best thing that she can offer. Um, so that's why. Uh, next up is we have Br Braun. Now, the thing about Braun is that he's not really a very good main. Well, actually, he's a decent main for late game, but not really a decent main for early game. Um, as a beast manager, he's gonna be building into decent skills. He has armor and interference at the beginning of the game. The best thing about Braun is you get up to seven basilisks. Seven basilisks, that's absolutely insane. Um, in any mirror template, if you get him, uh, then you have like an amazing army to go off of, like you can do highs way easier, you can do like so many things with Braun, and you can build him into a decent main too. Um, but once again, he's gonna be going into top of A tier, I don't think he deserves the S tier, um, not quite at the very least. Then next up is we have Caitlyn. Um, Caitlyn is a very similar to, uh, case to Adelaide and Ashel, who are basically an open canvas to building whatever hero you want to have. Uh, but she's gonna be, like, a little bit more specialized. 
Um, usually you don't want her to build it into like a complete main, you want her to be like a good side hero. For heroes such as MP5 Walk, she is perfect, she is exactly what you want, and way better than Adelaide. Uh, however, in heroes like Duel, where like um, skill slots are very valuable, you don't actually want the intelligence. And also, by the way, on average, her specialty of 350 gold is way better than Adelaide's as well. I would put her actually a little bit above uh, um, Adelaide. And here we are. Not Anian, though. There we go. So, next up is we have Cal. Um, Cal is the go-to Jeebus Cross Zero for Inferno. He starts off with three Gog stacks, meaning that, you get, get, that, meaning that he is the reason why you get up to like 30 Magogs on day one in Jeebus Cross. It is absolutely amazing how powerful that is. You can immediately do like uh, most of the dwellings, uh, you can even with Expert Slow do like some low tier consoles and whatnot, or even high tier if you can, you know, get some good kiting done. Um, Cal is a very good big staple on Inferno, and the reason why Inferno actually is um, off the, the absolute bottom in Jeebus Cross. He is the gold pick hero for some templates, but not all templates. And I feel like he deserves a rightful spot in the A tier. Uh, so yeah, next up is we have Khaled. Khaled is a heretic, so immediately he's gonna be like the bottom of the list, let's be honest. Um, however, he provides like two pretty distinct features, which are pretty good. Uh, the first one is he is the sulfur sniffer. Um, he gets uh, to find, I mean, he gets to generate one sulfur per day, which is decent. And then the second part is that he has haste in the spellbook. If he can scroll it over to other heroes, then that's great. And even if he can't, he can cast haste, so he's like a little bit better in taking like some small fights than, you know, like an Axis would be, uh, for example. Uh, because of this, he goes into the top of D tier <laughs> instead of the bottom. No, actually, low C. Low C tier. Let's go. So, here we go. Next up is we have the Cosmetra. She is the Sea Witch Specialist Navigator of the Gold Faction. She starts off with Water Magics and, um... Yeah, Water Magics as well as Wisdom, I believe. Actually... Yes, okay. And she also has the spell in the spell book. The spell is not really a spell that you're looking for on a hero at the very start, so that's like pretty bad. But having water magic, so you can build her into like a decent fight hero with like Esprit Bless for the co faction, if you have her. A few levels investment could make her into being pretty good, like kind of okay. It's not too bad. Um. Still though, you don't really want to main her. Navigators don't really roll that well. They get a decent amount of knowledge, but that alone is just not good enough. I would put her in C tier. So here we are. Uh, next up is we have Cassiopeia. Um, Cassiopeia is the Taraxer of the Gold Faction. She is the Nymph Specialist of the um, Gold Faction. Uh, she starts off with um, offense and tactics, and she has um, she starts off with three stacks of oceanids at the beginning of the game, making you have a throng of oceanids or near um, at the beginning of the game in many many templates, and that is awesome, absolutely amazing. And she even builds into a good main, so good starting army, good main potential for Gold or any other faction. She is a wonderful hero, very well represented in. Um, very many templates. She is awesome. And uh, because she's a captain and not a barbarian, I will put her top of A tier rather than S tier. Uh, next up is we have Catherine. Um, Catherine is a knight, so a might castle hero. And she starts off with the leadership on offense. She is also a swordsman specialist. These things are not exceedingly amazing, and also as a knight, you don't roll for as many skills, good skills, as you normally would on other might classes. Like, you're gonna be rolling into some diplomacy, into some estates, and you also start off with leadership, which is not ideal. So, knights are not the best to build, but if you get her to level 5, then just have, like, some offense, then you're gonna be... Um... Anyway, so yeah, if you're gonna be building up to, to like level 5 to just get like some uh, expert offense, expert leadership, she's gonna be able to do like some many good fights. However, unless you have like a Conflux Magic University, you don't exactly want to build her into a main. She's not gonna be on average getting like very good skills on level ups. So that's why, despite being like a very good early fight there, she's not gonna be a good main. I would put her in B tier. Uh, so next up is we have Charna. Charna is a Death Knight that specializes in Black Knights. 
She ends up having tactics and uh, necromancy at the very beginning of the game. Keeps disrespecting leadership and keeps losing your fanaticals to Mr. Morales. I do, but um, I still go by what I say, okay? Leadership is okay, but it's not good. So yeah, Charna is uh, pretty decent as a side hero. She can take like some fights as, a, uh, as like a um, kind like some night hero. You don't usually want to main her, even if you're going to be like building Black Knights. And you don't usually want to build her because she ends up having the uh, Necromancy, which is eating up a skill slot well, by not providing too much. So I don't really like Charna. She's kind of meh, in my opinion, in most scenarios. But she can be like okay with like a few levels just to take some fights. So, I'm thinking of top C tier or low B tier. I'll, I'll go high C tier. Um, here we go. So next up is we have Christian. Christian ends, uh, is the Ballista Specialist for the Castle Faction. He's a knight, he has leadership, and he has artillery, and whenever you buy him immediately into the game, you're going to be having a 2500 gold Ballista just printed for your faction, which is amazing. Now, the thing about the Ballista is this, okay? You really want some attack skill alongside your Ballista, because it scales off of that, and uh, knights don't really provide that much of attack skill, unfortunately. So it's not really that great on Christian, but just having it is already okay. Christian doesn't build into a good main because leadership is not an ideal uh, skill at the beginning of the game, and he doesn't level up into other good things. You basically take his ballista and then you just like discard him somewhere in the corner, um, make him part of a chain somewhere. You know, that's all you do with him. So I would say that he is um, low B tier. Uh, next up is we have Seely. Seely is the absolute queen of any small template. Uh, some people used to play like uh, Festival or like some empty hundred maps, okay, in the lobby. And whenever you play, play these one of these templates and you just run them into Seely, you automatically win. She has the most broken early game ability, and that is Magic Arrows with 50% uh, more damage. It is absolutely insane how oppressive this is. You can do like so many big fights. You also have like pretty good knowledge and pretty good uh, power at the beginning of the game as an elementalist. And she just takes it like a level further than the other heroes. Um, however, in bigger templates, she ends up getting outscaled by heroes that are going to be rolling better and starting off with better skills as well, because one magic is not ideal in most scenarios. So, there we go. So, despite being the queen of small maps, I would say that she is low A tier. There we go. Uh, next up is we have um, Clancy. Clancy is Unicorn Specialist Druid of the Rampart Faction. He has Interference as well as Pathfinding at the beginning of the game. These are not useless skills, but they're skills that are going to be not immediately having any value for you. So, if you're investing into Clancy, then you're basically... Like, discarding levels, that's all you're doing, really. So you don't want to invest in, into him as a main. You don't want to... Um, yeah, you don't want to main him. You don't really want to use him as a side hero. In order to get him going, you need, like, way too much experience. That's actually... um, Yeah, it's just, like, zero value. So you don't usually use this Clancy at all. You maybe sometimes use the fact that he has free defense at the very beginning of the game as a ranger to take, like, a fight or two. Uh, but apart from that, he just absolutely sucks. So, I would say that he's D tier. Super garbage. Uh, next up is you have Clavius. Um, any hero that's gonna be having like 350 gold specialty, like Clavius does, is immediately gonna be like a pretty good find for templates uh, that are gonna be like more poor and slow paced, like HVDM1, Sixlem Tene, and so on. And that is actually pretty cool. Then also, uh, he is a Death Knight, and Death Knights tend to roll like decent skills, and he also has like an 8 tier skill as uh, one of his uh, starting abilities. Of course, he has uh, basic necromancy and uh, basic offense. So actually, you can, you're can you both happy to get Clavius um, as a hero for many uh, situations, and he can also build into a decent main even in some situations. I wouldn't say that he's top tier, but I would say he's middle of the pack, kind of. I would put him in somewhere in B tier. Ale Edric. No. Edric. Edric sucks. Well, actually, Edric is kind of decent, but I don't want to admit it right now. Anyway, we'll get to him eventually. Uh, next up is Quarks. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about Quarks, okay? You see, I like how not a content creator, Rito sucks, okay? And Rito, like, treats uh, Quarks like the uh, second coming of Jesus. He worships Quarks and says that he's, like, the absolute best... Uh, Give the heroes free, okay? 
I don't exactly agree with that. I think he's exaggerating it. Um, offense specialty is amazing, and it does a lot for your hero. However, um, as a captain, he gets zero defense. And also, he um, starts off with pathfinding too, which is very not useful on a main hero in many cases, because you can handle the terrain penalty in um, other ways uh, than having your main hero just tank it. Uh, so yeah, I would say that Quarks is uh, interesting. You see... The point of a good mind hero is usually to take a Utopia, and a Utopia is taken, I think, very much more often by tanking it rather than dam out damaging it, okay? And Quark's uh, being like, uh, he's gonna go in level 10 to a Utopia, or like level 15 even, and he's still gonna have like two defense. It's absolutely abysmal. He's usually not gonna be having armor either. He's gonna be absolutely obliterated before you even get a move in in many situations, and I don't like that about him. So despite being really, really strong, I wouldn't put him at the top. I would actually put him even below Cassiopeia. He doesn't get like a lot of starting army, his starting skills are kind of meh in many situations, So and even the offense specialty doesn't carry him uh, more up than this, in my opinion. So there we go. Is GC tier list? Um, I'm doing it generally. Wow, that's a lot of heroes to go through. Let's go. And the A tier is still like pretty abundant. Um, let's see if it changes. Uh, next up is we have Coronius! Wisdom and Scholar is like a pretty good setup for a hero, always. Um, and however, he doesn't have anything to teach other heroes. So he has Slayer, but Slayer is just not good. It's like pretty awful, actually. Um, you almost never use this ability at all. You're kind of happy to get him just so you can like trade a shuffle and trade spells around, but that's like all he does. You maybe can build him into like kind of like a main sometimes, but um, yeah, you don't exactly usually want to do this. So, with this in mind, I would say that he is C tier. Um, there we go. Hmm. And next up is we have the King of Might himself, Greg Hack. Um, he's a barbarian, so he rolls into amazing skills. And of course, he starts off with advanced offense, and he is the offense specialist. Unlike the course, he is the OG offense specialist, okay? He is like the absolute best. I love this uh, hero every single time I play him. Even if your roles are bad skills, you still feel like an absolute boss playing him, and everyone fears your mighty hits. However, due to consistency issues of him level like, get, and level 3 getting like usually pretty bad skills, I would actually still put him a little bit below Alkin. That seems bizarre, right? The, main, the full potential of Gorx is like way more than what an Alkin could provide, but the consistency is a very important part of Euros 3 in very many cases, and because of this, he is going to be below Alkan. Scrag hack. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So, next up is we have Cutbirth. He's a cleric from uh, the Castle Faction, of course, and he has wisdom and estates at the beginning of the game. Um, by the way, if you don't know, Horn of the, Horn of the Abyss doubled the estates, okay? So now estates is actually pretty good. If you get it up to expert, you're gonna be getting like a thousand gold. Just like that! Like a full gold mine walking around, and it's like a hero that can also cast some spells. Uh, because, you know, Claire starts off with a book, um, I think he has Skewer at the beginning of the game. It's not that bad. So, he's not like the bottom of the list because of that. He's, uh, very near the bottom though. Um, he is C tier. Uh, next up is we have Syra. Now, Syra's a wizard, so wizards, uh, one of the main features of a wizard, by the way, is that they start off with free knowledge, and free knowledge at the beginning of the game, like, lets you cast, like, quite a few spells, and Syra has a very strong spell to cast, Haste. Not only simple haste, but boosted haste was a specialty, uh, much like Brissa does. Um, however, her, sonic, uh, her secondary sonic skill is um, diplomacy. And sometimes you want that, and sometimes it's an upside. However, in most cases, it's a downside to have the diplomacy at the beginning of the game. So, Syra does not build as into as good of a hero as somebody that, uh, like, um, Adelaide or Ashel would. And her boosted haze does not carry her that far either. I would say, say she is top of B tier because of this. Is this just for duel? No, this is for all templates in general. Control templates, GC, duel, I'm generalizing a lot and putting them at where I think they're gonna be like averaging out on. Um, that's how it is. <clears throat> so, next up is we have Dace. Dace is an overlord, so immediately strong. Um, and of course he is the monitor specialist. He even looks like a, a monitor. 
Uh, very chilly, the specialists don't actually look like they specialize in the unit. Like, who would have ever think that Aries is a Pegasi specialist? I certainly never would. Um, so yeah. Dace is, starts off with Offense and Tactics, which is a very good skill set for very many templates, uh, especially Gibbous Cross and many of the uh, Mirror templates as well, like Mirror Gibbous, uh, even Empty Firewalk, uh, he's like a pretty good Mind Hero for you to use. And because of this, um, he's actually decent. He can build into like a very strong hero, but he's not like super exceptional. You're happy to find him, you're happy to use him as a side hero, you're happy to use him as a main, but you're not like super happy about the use it. I mean, you're not super happy about using him. He's just decent. He's very much like Boragus, by the way. So next up is we have Damacon! Uh, Damacon is quite the god, and it's very hard to describe into words why he's such a god, honestly, okay? Um, some things in Heroes free. okay. Some things in Heroes 3 are better felt than um, conveyed in words, okay? For example, in Dual Cove mid is really bad, but if you were to look at their units, you would say, but wait, why is it bad? It doesn't make any sense. And Tamcon is very similar. He is an Overlord, so that's already really good. He starts off with Advanced Offense, that is also really good, and has 350 gold specialty, that is amazing. So for many reasons, he's already really good, but what pushes him to the new dex level is his consistency. Now... The fact that he ends up getting like a new skill at level 3 is a downside for Craghag, but somehow it turns up into an upside for Damacon. Um, after many games of playing, many players like notice this, he always gets like Logistics or Earth Magic at level 3, and then by level 5 he can either like move all over the map while having like really good might, or he can like cast extra slow, so expert slow faster than any other mind hero and so on. So he ends up being like a god in pretty much almost any format, he's really really good. I will put him S tier, of course. He's very awesome as well. I don't know what makes him awesome, but he's awesome. <clears throat> um, so next up is Dermith. Uh, Dermith is a very cool hero. She is uh, the only. She is the hero that starts off with the most mana in the game at level one. The, nobody has more mana at level one than her. Um, so that is already like pretty unique and very awesome about her. And also Phantom H3, a really cool content creator for Heroes 3, also uses her as like the main avatar icon. Uh, so yeah, she has a lot going for her, like in terms of thematics, uh, glowy blue eyes, she looks absolutely awesome, has the most amount of mana, and can build it to like a very strong side hero. Um, you give her like a few levels and she's immediately going to be having like a really good mana pool, and she's going to be very very useful for you in many templates, and because of this, I would say that she deserves at least low A tier, despite being a wizard with not many uh, very distinct uh, good qualities. So yeah. Uh, next up is we have Dodgem. Uh, Dodgem is the forgetfulness specialist? Actually, I feel like I have forgetfulness. No, he is the airshield guy. Oh yeah, my bad. I mistook him uh, with Zalari. Okay. This guy is the tacti uh, Wisdom Tactics um, guy with air shield as well. Uh, it feels like this guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Is he a wizard? Is he a might guy? Is he supposed to fight? Is he supposed to be invested into for some mana and like some schools of magic? I don't really know. And I feel like not many people don't either, so many people don't use him at all. Um, so he's gonna be like pretty low on the list. Mm, having tactics, having like being like a navigator with some decent knowledge already lets him do like some um, small fights as a side hero, for example, like a black tower and so on. So he's not like entirely horrible like D tier. However, he is C tier. Here we go. Uh, next up is we have Dark Storm. He, uh, I think he is the Stone Skin specialist, and he also has learning immediately in the skill tree. So learning is one of the worst skills in the game, because uh, learning gives you like uh, additive experience, but um, the scaling of experience is linear, so <laughs> learning is like one of the most garbage skills that the game has to offer, apart from Eagle Eye. Um, so because of this, Darkstone is of course like a pretty bad hero. You can maybe sometimes score like an early earth magics on him, and he's still gonna be like pretty decent because of that, but most usually, unless you're forced to, you don't want to use this guy. Um, he is gonna be D tier. Top of D tier, though. And next up is we have Deemer! Uh, Deemer is probably feared by very many players for many reasons. Um, for example, I don't often get killed by AI. Um, like AI in, so, in the template where you have like AI moving around and whatnot. But whenever I do, it's very usually Deemer. 
Um, having Meteor Shower in the beginning of the game is very, very scary. And uh, if you yeah, is scared with the Meteor Shower, you can guess what a player could do with this. Um, you can choose early conservatories, early objectives, get yourself going like way faster. He is, uh, he gives you like a lot of tempo and uh, he also builds into like a pretty good hero too because he doesn't have like an entirely useless skill at the very beginning of the game. So he is the, one of the best heroes in the early game whenever you find him even on like another faction or even if you choose him. And he also scales pretty well too. So Demir is S tier, a very game defining hero. Like he's awesome. Uh, next up is we have Derek. He's a captain, so he's a mind hero from Cove, of course. And Derek, um, the main thing about him is that he starts off with three uh, stacks of Meta to see. And Simon do like a pretty good job in tanking objectives. So he's gonna be able to take like um fly high almost on day one, which is pretty unique, at least for Cove Faction. And because of this, he's very sought after in mirror templates, and he's also like a decent might hero in general, starting off with offense and leadership. These are two decent skills, I mean offense is top tier, and leadership is okay. And he also builds into like other good skills immediately after. So with this in mind, you can build him to a decent hero, he's sought after in some templates, that brings over a, like a good starting army. He is going to be A tier. Um, so yeah. Uh, next up is we have Dessa! Um, Dessa used to be one of the main heroes in the game. Um, in Shadow of Death, when Logistics was still broken at 30%, and, uh, yeah, Logistics Specialists used to reign dominance and supreme over every single template. Um, ever since the nerf of Logistics and Horn the Abyss, and with Chaining becoming way more, and with players becoming way better at Chaining, uh, you don't really need as many moon points anymore to get things done, and also the logistics itself got nerfed as well. So Dessa fell out of favor, and right now he's not even used that much anymore at all. Being a battle mage, he doesn't really have anything good to begin with, and he also doesn't roll for that many good things either. So Dessa, uh, despite being uh, once upon a time being king of Heroes 3, is now a lowly B tier. Shame. Uh, next up is we have one of the most badass heroes in the entire game, Drakon! And Drakon can turn any sort of, uh, he can turn, uh, Zealous Monks, um, Magi, Arc Magi, into Enhancers. Okay, Enchanters. Okay, I'll, I'll do it, I'll say it. Um, so Enchanters are really good, and of course, Draken, they can print them, is one of the best heroes in the, in the entire game. And even himself as a hero, he starts off with Advanced Wisdom, so he can build into like, whatever hero you want them to be. He is awesome! And, uh, yeah. Of course, he's not available in most templates, so... You're not gonna be, actually get, get to play him, but if you would... Oh my god, you would own. For example, some uh, wacky 8 uh, FFA templates, like um, Veshram Cross, whenever you play some community games, that's actually, you know, he's available there, and whenever you use him, it's actually, like, really, really cool. Uh, and then we have the worst dragon. Despite him being the worst dragon, do not underestimate this guy. He's a Beastmaster, so that's already, like, credit to him. Um, Yeah. Uh, he... He's the main guy to pick for Jewish Cross on and Mirror Jeebus and many other templates. As start, he's gonna be like your main starting hero because he starts off with three stacks of gnolls. Uh, three stacks of gnolls gives you almost immediately a throng of gnolls that is able to do like a hive. And if you do a hive on Stronghold, you're gonna be like rolling through the entire game. So he's already very favored but because of what he brings uh, to the game. As a main hero, he is okay. He's not really that great as a main hero. Um, you don't really want leadership, and leadership is not that good of a combo with all armor. Like, it's okay, but if you could main someone else, you usually main someone else better. So, he's A tier. Mm, I'll say lower A tier. Um, here we go. Uh, next up is we have Edric. Now... Whenever you see Edric in your tavern as a castle player, you're gonna be like pretty upset with, uh, about that because he starts off with two griffin stacks, and that is not an upside, that is a downside, because you get one of the griffin stacks instead of archers, and archers are the main top stack for a castle early game. However, if you get this guy on a different faction, then he can actually be pretty okay. Um, he is just a decent might hero, like a very, very basic decent might hero, 
If you can somehow roll school's magic on him, by either a witch up, magic university, or just straight up luck on level ups, then he can do like a pretty good job for you being a main. Um, you kind of have to be desperate to main Edric, but he, but it can be done. And because of this, I will give him B tier. Um, so here we go. Uh, next up is we have Elishar. Elishar is uh, one of the free, well, the last of the free intelligence specialists. And he is a druid. Druids uh, get like a pretty good amount of knowledge on level ups, though they only start with you. And yeah, he can build into like an amazing hero. Um, and because of that, he is uh, kind of awesome. And he's very sought after in very, very many templates. Um, he is going to be A tier. Honestly, I feel like he's about equivalent to Andra. It's very hard for me to tell the difference between Andra and Elishire. Um, yeah. Next up is we have Elmore. Elmore is going to be like very rarely used in any sort of format. And he he's the navigation specialist. He starts off with advanced navigation immediately. So he is an absolute navigator. And in water maps, he's awesome. He can actually immediately move like so far. It's amazing. However, because uh, water templates are not even played, even though, like in challenge maps, there's not a lot of not a lot of water content, so he ends up being kind of meh. And um, yeah, I don't really like him too much. He is C tier. Uh, next up is we have Eovashius. Now, Eovashius has one of the most unique and one of the most broken specialties in the entire game. Every single first cast of clone for every fight is going to be summoning two stacks of the clone unit instead of one. And that is awesome! So you have 70 titans, how about uh, 210 titans instead? Like, it's absolutely nuts what you can do with the specialty. Um, so yeah, being a, such a unique hero, he is uh, like absolutely awesome. He also has like pretty good skills to start with, uh, wisdom and intelligence is kind of okay. Uh, navigators roll into like okay, uh, okay skills as well. And of course the clone specialty and the fact that you have clone in this public immediately as well is absolutely awesome. Um, Eovashius is an S tier hero, in my opinion. So yeah, and yes that's Mon, this is gonna be a new team. Uh, next up is we have Erdemon. Erdemon is an Earth and uh, Magma Elemental Specialist. He is a Planeswalker. Planeswalkers are all over the place. They get like, I think they have like almost equivalent uh, chances for every school of magic. And so they don't usually roll for the good schools of magic consistently at all. So, yeah. Uh, because of this, he... Um, yeah, because that paired up with the fact that he doesn't have, um, good, uh, immediate skills. Like, he starts off with estates and tactics. He's just not really that good. He's okay as a side hero. You kind of want him as a side hero, even. Um, tactics on the side hero is really good, and estates on the side hero is really good. Uh, paired up with some decent mind stats. Um, yeah, he's kind of okay. So, I would put him high C tier, at the most. So, next up is we have Fafnir. Uh, Fafnir is a hero that I very commonly find myself looking for, specifically in the tavern. I'm like, oh my god, if the next hero is Fafnir, this is amazing. Uh, because he has, uh, Scholar and Haste. So if you ever want to cast Haste, Fafnir is gonna be immediately hooking you up with the entire package to do so. And that is honestly pretty cool. And he was also like a Naga Specialist, but that doesn't matter. And he has Interference, but that also doesn't matter. So he's pretty bad in general. But for that one reason, he's actually pushed up to B uh, C tier instead of D tier. Um, that is all. <clears throat> Next up is we have Fiona. Uh, Fiona is a Demoniac that is... Uh, by the way, Demoniacs are actually pretty good. Demoniacs are in my class that uh, do a lot for you, really. They have decent might stats, they roll into logistics very often, offense very often, which is awesome. And they usually have like pretty good silent skills. And Fiona is very specific. Fiona is good for some templates, but really bad for other templates. So, for example, in... In Jeepers Cross, you're just gonna have her like a, uh, as a side hero at level 2 with expert off I mean, expert scouting, and then she's gonna be looking around. In Duel, she's one of the best um, mains because she has scouting. And in some other templates, she doesn't do a lot at all. She's kind of all over the place. I would put her in... Hmm. I would put her in high B tier. She has a lot of utility and a lot of potential. But um, in many formats, she ends up being used like as a side hero. So, here she is. 
Um, next up is we have Fior. Uh, Fior is the Fire Elemental Specialist, but you see, the specialty for Fire Elementals is absolutely broken. Um, and because of this, uh, Fior ends up being interesting, okay? Like, most, uh, specialties end up almost doing nothing for your units. Like, plus one speed and, like, maybe, like, free, uh, free attack, free defense. Like, it's honestly kind of pathetic how, uh, how little the specialties provide. However, Fear Specialty, okay, um, look at this. Fear Specialty adds, like, a percentage of damage. Like, it gives you base damage as a specialty. And, uh, that is honestly really, really amazing. And one of the best things you can have on a unit from the specialty. So he makes, like, Fire Elementals look completely broken as a unit. Um, because of this, he is actually decent. He also gets, like, a pretty good, uh, starting skills. And he can also roll into decent things. But he's not very consistent. But he's also from Confi, so you can actually build a Magic University and make him consistent. Force him to be consistent. So, yeah. I actually really liked her. I will put him in A tier. Um, there we go. Uh, next up is Galfran. He's the Skeleton King, the Death Knight that, sta that starts with three stacks of skeletons immediately into the game. Um, as a Death Knight with good starting skills and also, um, like so much army and the Skeleton specialty, he is the best Jeebus Cross hero. And you very usually see like a full basic Galfran so often, you know. He ends up rolling for immediate uh, wisdom that you take, uh, earth magic that you take, logistics, offense. And then you see like a six skill Galfran with all these six skills being at basic. Uh, but that only goes to show how good he actually is because he's like rolling all the skills like immediately that you want. Uh, so yeah, Galfran is absolutely awesome. Um, really, really good. And even if you're not playing um, like Necropolis, even if you don't pick him, if you get him like somewhere else, he can also even be a main. Uh, because he like defines Necropolis on many factions, I would put him top of A tier. Um, there we go. Next up is Jolari. So as I said, 350 gold specialty is pretty good. Um, so you immediately like generate some gold for your faction, and then he's also an elementalist. Elementals are uh, are very sought after in very many formats. Uh, and because of that, he is already, like, pretty decent, but what I imagine is just awesome back a little bit. Like, compared to Steely, he doesn't do that much for you. So, because of this, he's gonna be bottom at B tier, despite having some decent selling points. So, yeah. Necro hater. Uh, next up is Jellu! Jellu is very much like Draken. Um, he can turn any... He can turn Marksman Archer and the uh, Elf Grandolf into Sharpshooters. And so, it's a broken ability. It's a straight-up broken ability that's only meant for the campaign. But he can also be played on some specific um, maps and PvP as well. And, uh, yeah. If you get him and you use him, then you're probably going to be having like a really good time. Um, he is S-tier, of course. Mm-hmm. And next up is we have Gem. Gem is a druid with the first day special team. She provides you with an immediate tent, which is kind of okay. Uh, but just providing a tent for your entire kingdom, being a hero that is not really worth investing into, and not really one that provides you with much in the early game, just basically like really, really bad. And the tent is not getting, gonna get you out of D tier, Gem. So Gem goes on to D. Um, there we go. Uh, next up is Gion. Uh, Warlocks are can be okay, but uh, Jin is like everything worst about the about being a Warlock. He has like one selling point, and that is the fact that he has slow in the spellbook immediately into the game. So you can sometimes call her the spell the slow over or use it on the hero itself and like get some decent value out of that. But honestly, it's like pretty bad. And Jion, the Eagle Eye Specialist, is also D tier. Wait, actually, let me double check this hero. Mm, eagle eye slow. Yeah, okay. I, you know, just double checking. Mm-hmm. This look at his profile is your brain cells, Gion. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next up is we have Jarwolf. Uh, Jarwolf is the artillery specialist for Fortress, and he's also a Beastmaster, so that's, like, okay. Uh, but honestly, being a Beastmaster is not okay in the context of being an artillery specialist. And because the Ballista scales super heavily off of attack skill, uh, basically, Gerbalf is a joke. 
he does like actually zero damage on his ballista. So you just like transfer the ballista over and then just uh, toss your wolf into the dirt because he doesn't really do much for you at all. Um, then again, like providing the ballista, he's gonna be like not D tier, but he's gonna be C tier. Like, um, Artillery Specialist and Beastmaster are two, like, very mismatched things. They don't really fit together at all. And because of that, he's not really good at all. So, there we go. Uh, next up is we have Gerd. Or Jerd, I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, she is kind of awful. Uh, Battle Mage does start off with one knowledge. That is super bad. So, the hero better be good if he wants to go, like, anywhere higher in the list. And Gerd being a Sorcery Specialist does not really do that. Sorcery on paper is like a pretty good, spe uh, I mean, ability. Like having more damage on your damaging spells seems pretty good. However, 15% uh, is a pathetic amount. Even if you were to have like a level 20 Gerd and double it, even then it's pathetic. You're investing like a full skill on a bad hero. And you're having like your entire specialty that you invest into uh, getting up to level 20. And all you get is 30% damage. A single orb in the inventory gives you 50% damage, and that much investment gives you 30% damage. That goes to show how bad it actually is, okay? Um, D tier, garbage. So, there we go. By the way, in some templates, in some specific scenarios where you're guaranteed to go late game, Gerd can actually be used and can be pretty good. For example, you can boost the fire shield damage, which is, which is a pretty unique thing, uh, but... That is so rare and uncommon that I'm not willing to give her a better rating just because of a very niche scenario. So, there you go. Uh, next up is we have Gretchen. Now, Gretchen is a pretty great hero. She's a barbarian from the Stronghold faction. By the way, we can zoom out a little bit so we can see more of the heroes at the same time. Uh, so, you can, so anyone coming in can see the entire list. So, there we go. Uh, next up is Gretchen. She's a Barbarian. She starts off uh, with um, basic uh, offense and basic pathfinding. But most notably, she starts off with three stacks of Goblin. And whenever you start off with three stacks of the same unit, the hero is bound to be pretty good. Because you immediately get like a power stack that you can use in order to take fights on every single other hero that you have. Um, Gretchen does not make for like one of the best mains that you can have, but she is actually kind of okay. Barbarians um, are usually going to be okay as a main, and she also provides with the army, so she is actually, like, pretty good, very respectable hero. She is very much like Cassiopeia, but, like, a little bit worse, because Pathfinding is not as good as Tactics, on average. So, there we go. And next up is we have the Kebobber King himself, uh, Grendon! Grendon is the comfy hero that actually makes almost the entire faction broken as a proxy. He can cast, he can guarantee cast the best spell in the game by level 5, and he can do it well. And, uh, yeah. He starts off with the uh, slow in the spellbook, and he starts off with earth magics in his skill tree. So if you get up to uh, level 5, you're gonna be guaranteed earth magics uh, at expert, and you're gonna be having the slow, of course. So, expert slow lets you, like, cheese every single fight that Hero 3 has to offer. Well, not every single fight, but most of them, okay? And uh, that lets you, like, cheat a lot of tempo. Do, you, like, an easy picket, because the slow wolves actually do nothing. Um, then use the Cyclops to cheese even more fights, and cheese, cheese, cheese your way to victory. And that's how Conflicts does it, and what enables it, most of the time, is Grendon. Whenever you get the zero, like, on in any other template, he's, like, absolutely amazing. The gold specialty is, like, a nice extra bonus on top of everything else that he provides. He is a top-tier hero. One of the best that Hero 3 has to offer. Hail Kebobber King, Grendon. There we go. Uh, next up is we have Gunjula. Gunjula is an offense specialist, so that already is really good. She also starts off with slow in the spellbook, so she has like pretty decent luck in terms of rolling. She can actually be the second fastest hero to cast Expert Slow. Well, not second, but like one of the one of the faster ones. Uh, but a battle mage, a battle mage is not really good, even with the offense specialty, and. Uh, I would say that she is good, you kind of want her as a main in many templates, but she's kind of hard to invest in, because um, without any investment, she doesn't do a lot. For example, if you have like a Krag hack, like level 1 or level 2, Krag is already providing you with a lot of value. He's making your entire army like way stronger than it otherwise would be. Ganjula doesn't feel like she does that for like a little while. She needs more investment, but if she gets that investment, she can be really great. So she is going to be high in the A tier. Well, no, like middle of A tier, I would say. 
Uh, next up is Gunner. Um, Gunner is really awesome, okay? Uh, he is an overlord that is a logistics specialist. This combination is absolutely insane. Because of this combination, he used to be the absolute undisputed best zero for every single situation in the game in Shadow of Death. Horn Deep has changed that. And logistics is not really as sought after anymore as it used to be. At least the specialist that is. And because of this, um, I mean, he still belongs in S tier. He's amazing, and he's so good that he's even banned in many templates as well. That's how good he is. Um, he's going straight into S tier among all the other legends of the game. Uh, but if this was a Shadow of Death tier list, you would have to make a new tier for him. I just want to emphasize that despite dropping in value so much to where he is to be, he is still one of the best heroes in the game. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize that. Um, yep. Uh, next up is we have Gurnison. Um, Gurnison is the Barbarian Artillery Specialist. And, uh, as I said, like, many times about the Artillery Specialist by now, um, attack skill matters a lot. Like, so much when you're playing Artillery, okay? And Gurnison does it the best, because Barbarians are top with 4 attack, that's insane, really, really good. And also they like roll attack in pretty much every single level up until level 10, and then mostly attack after that as well. So you get an insane amount of attack on Gurney, and with the Ballistic he's able to like one-shot things by like level 5. It's absolutely broken. I would actually put Gurnison S tier. Like, this guy with a Ballista and an Angel would be able to clear like almost the entire map. He can do like so much, it's insane. You send this guy, like, out into, like, a side, and that entire side can be considered farmed, okay? It's absolutely broken. He's so good. Uh, the best out of any artillery specialist. Um, Gernison is a god. Uh, does he, like, not get a ballista? No, he doesn't get a ballista. What? Um, I'm actually gonna double check. I am... I don't think I'm incorrect. Sauce with ballista always. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, what makes Gernison better than other Tudor Specialists? Because he gets a lot of attack, and attack skill scales the Ballista in a very, um, dreadful way. Like, it de deals, like, an absurd amount of damage on Gernison, much more so than the other heroes. Um, so yeah, here we go. Then, next up is we have Halen. Halen is the wizard with, the uh, Mysticism specialty. And it's not really that good. Mythicism was buffed in Horn Abyss big time, where now it provides you with 5, 10, 15 instead of 1, 2, 3 extra mana recovery per turn. But even with this, it's not good enough to make it actually worthwhile. Uh, you would rather just recover mana and then like, go out to spend it and that's that. And then invest your secondary skills into something actually useful. Um, so with this, Halen is going to be D tier pretty bad. Uh, does not really have many redeeming qualities at all. Um, here we go. Uh, next up is going to be um, Ignatius. Ignatius is a hero that doesn't um, doesn't really have like good starting skills. Like tactics and interference are not really that good. However, um, as other team specialists, he's already going to be good just because he provides a lot of army at the beginning of the game. He's not the preferred army hero for. Um, for Inferno. I mean, he is outshined by Cal in that kind of way. However, whenever Cal is going to be unavailable, because you're maybe playing like a mirror template and Cal was banned, or for any other reason, you, if you have to pick Ignatius, you're going to be doing like a pretty good job. Oh, by the way, the meta for Empty King, I think, is to pick Ignatius right now over Cal, because Ignatius can guarantee, uh, guaranteed outspeed the Wolfies in a picket, and if he can do that, he can usually pretty easily farm a picket, so he's actually really good in that regard. Um, you don't usually build him to a main hero, but you can, you can kind of get away with him as a main, because he's a demoniac, and demoniacs tend to roll for pretty good things. Um, so yeah. He is, um, he's actually very similar to Cal in my opinion. A little bit worse because he does not have as much main potential, but still really relevant and pretty good. So here we go. Uh, next up is Ignissa. Ignissa is, uh, I mean, she has artillery on offense at the beginning of the game. And I think she's the special, like, he's, um, she is a fire elemental specialist? Wait, is she? Why did I forget that? Uh, 
It's because I don't usually use her for that reason. Yeah, Fire Elemental Specialist. And um, like Fury, she has uh, the same specialty as um, the Fury does. And uh, that specialty, specialty is really cool, but you don't use her like that. Because um, if you have artillery in the beginning of the game, you don't usually want to build her into a main. She's going to be like a decent side hero if you have a Ballista from somewhere else. Because she's not an artillery specialist, which means that she does not start with the uh, ballista. So yeah, if you get an external ballista on her and give her like a few levels, she's gonna be okay. But okay is the best she will ever be. So that's why she's going low B tier. Um, here we go. Uh, next up is we have Eivor. So once again, this is gonna be like a a, a decision that I make by feel. Okay. Um, it's gonna be like a very similar sword to Alkin. Uh, some heroes tend to roll, like, really, really well. Um, like some hero classes, like captains, barbarians, uh, and, uh, whatever. However, usually every single class has, like, a certain weakness. For example, Beastmasters don't roll for offense. And Alkin, by solving the one weakness of his hero class, is able to go to the top of the tier list. And, uh... Eivor is uh, very, very much the same as Alkin in this regard. Um, one of the main problems of captains is that they cannot roll armor. And Eivor starts with armor. So he just solved the entire problem of the entire class that he's off. That he's off. And that makes him, as a hero, one of the best heroes that you can main. He's absolutely awesome every single time you use him. He's actually S tier as a hero. If you don't like include the birds or consider him, um, Elor, by the way, not Eivor, sorry. Um, he's Elor. I blame Ruto for this mistake because he says both hero names are the same. Um, anyway, yeah. He's absolutely awesome. <clears throat> it's hard to like, uh, it might seem weird if you're looking at this and like just looking at info and sheets, but if you play him, you'll understand. He's like an absolute god. He feels so good to play. So yeah. Uh, next up is we have Ingham. Ingham is a cleric that is a uh, monk specialist, and I believe he starts off with mysticism? Let me double check this. Ingham. Uh, yeah, mysticism and curse. So yeah, his public is trash, his secondary skill is trash, his hero class is average at best, um, he's honestly like a pretty garbage hero. Um, you don't usually want to mate him if you can ever avoid it, so he is deep there. Um, yeah. So, there we go. He goes at the bottom. Uh, next up is we have Intius. Now, Fire Magicians as Elementalists are the worst kind. Uh, Fire Magic does not provide you with that much at all. Now, Expert Curse can be, like, pretty useful for highs, pickets, and consoles. And those are the three main objectives that you're gonna be doing on many templates. However, um, one, it's pretty hard to get Curse as a spell. I feel like it's pretty rare, especially when you're playing, like, a good faction. Like, Bless is pretty rare if you're playing an evil faction. Curse is pretty rare if you're playing a good faction. And because of this, Intius cannot really... He's not that useful. Curse is not, like, as good of a way to deal with these objectives as Slow Haste is anyway. So he's not really as good, and it's hard to actually activate. And if you go late game, it's, um, like, Fire doesn't scale either. So, because of this, I would say that he's one of the worst elementalists in the game. Uh, putting him at C tier. He's C tier just because he's an elementalist. Mm hmm. So, next up is um, Iona. Iona is the Scholar Intelligence hero. Uh, yeah, Scholar Intelligence. She starts off with Magic Arrow and Genies. Now, any hero that starts off with Scholar and Magic Arrow is immediately going to be able to activate every single hero with a spellbook to do some damage. And that is honestly pretty awesome. It's uh, very effective in getting your, your early game going. I like Iona, but she's pretty much an aim, but without the gold specialty, so she's like a little bit lower. Um, there she goes. Uh, next up is we have Aishra. Aishra is the necromancy specialist, so in some templates, like HDM1, where you want the big skeleton stack, um, she's gonna be a go-to main hero if you can ever get your hands on her. Um, she's very, very good, and Adept Knight is gonna be also rolling pretty well with like offense, or logistics, earth match, and so on. A very solid hero. Even if you don't uh, main on a dead, she can actually still be okay. She is going to be A tier. Um, there we go. Uh, next up is Eivor. 
Um, Eivor is a ranger that has archery and offense, and most notably, he's the reason the reason why you pick him in uh, Jeebus Cross and most likely templates as a starting hero is not only because of his good starting skills, it's also because he starts off with two stacks of um, elves. So you immediately provide him with a lot of... Uh, you provide yourself with a lot of archers. Elor. No, this is Elor, this is Eivor. Right? Yeah, this is Eivor. Wait, you guys are... You guys are debating me. <laughs> uh, right. So yeah, Eivor is a great hero. Good starting army. Um, it is, And he fits into, like, uh, Rampy pretty well. Rampy has, like, some pretty fast creatures. Um, the elves are pretty fast, centers are pretty fast, so if you can get the damage in first, um, then you're usually going to be killing things with, like, your offense and archery on the Eivor. He feels really good to play on most factions, and, uh, not only, like, on Rampy, he is really nice, very good. I... I'm struggling to decide between S and high A. He's, like, the best ra- well, maybe not the best, maybe he's the second best ranger. I'll put him actually high A tier. I think he is about right here. Then next up is we have Jabakus. Uh, Jabakus is actually the barbarian version of Eivor. He also starts off with archery and uh, offense. However, instead of the uh, empty stacks of elves, he has two stacks of orcs. And while elves could be considered maybe in some cases in terms of damage a tier four unit, um, orcs in pretty much every single way is gonna be like a tier two unit. Okay, they're worse than lizards. Um, that's a tier below them. So, in terms of army, he's actually providing you negative army, because you usually would like maybe probably a few wolfies more, rather than the extra orcs. So, yeah, that's kind of awful. And as a hero, it's actually kind of okay. Dealing a lot of damage with offense and archery is kind of nice. So, as a main, for most factions, he's going to be actually really, really good. And because he's such a good main, I will put him low, low S tier. He's just like a step above Eivor, and Eivor is already really, really good. So here we go. Uh, next up is we have Jagar. Um, Jagar is the ego. Wait, no, he's mysticism. Um, Jagar, yeah, mysticism. Um, anyway, Jagar being a warlock is warlock. Is, uh, warlocks are not really that good. Nothing special. Then his uh, spellbook only has shield. Not really that good. And then he also has mysticism, and he's a mysticism specialist. Honestly, he has like almost no redeeming qualities. He is bottom of the barrel heroes. You don't really want to see these guys in your tavern ever. He is kind of bad. So, yeah. He's at the bottom. Uh, next up is we have Jedi. Now, Jedi is actually really awesome. He is the resurrection specialist. Um, the second one from Dungeon. And unlike Alamar, he does not have Scholar. This can be a blessing or a curse, depending on your situation. If you roll for Earth Magic immediately, he's going to be able to give uh, you better value immediately into the game um, and resurrect things on his own and carry the fights. However, he is uh, much less team oriented, and uh, I honestly don't know if that's better or worse. In many templates, this was actually worse, I believe, and you would rather have Alamar rather than Jedi, because Alamar prov provides for more, um, one, consistency, and two, flexibility, which is almost like the same thing. So, yeah. With this in mind, I would put a Jedi high A tier, and keep Alamar S tier. So, yeah. Here we go. Uh, next up is we have Genova. Now, Genova used to be a hero that I didn't really put a, uh, pay a lot of attention to, like, for a very long time when I played Heroes of Mana Major 3. However, recently, with the addition of many, uh, while playing, like, many new templates and so on, I began to realize how cool Genova actually is. One, she starts off with Advanced Archery, which is the only hero in the game that starts off with that, and Archery at Expert level scales super well. So level 2, she's providing your ranged army with 50! 50% extra damage! That's absolutely insane! It's so good! A level 2 Genova can do fights that other heroes wouldn't even fathom trying to do, okay? It's amazing. Um, then also on top of this, she provides your kingdom with some gold bonus as well. Like 50 gold specialty? Pretty solid, pretty good. So in many ways, she can, she's actually like a pretty decent hero. As a ranger, she tends to roll for like decent things as well. So she's good utility, she's good early game, she scales pretty well. Honestly, Genova is awesome. Um, high A tier actually. So, yeah. 
Uh, next up is going to be Jeremy. Um, Jeremy, with his big cannon, is uh, one of the most broken heroes to just randomly get in your tavern. Uh, he, with his own ca I mean, by the way, captains are heroes that, uh, that start with high attack and roll for like a lot of attack as well. Uh, which is absolutely awesome for um, artillery or a cannon base hero. He is a cannon specialist, he starts off with a cannon, and cannon is 4k gold worth, okay? Um, so you basically by buying Jeremy at the beginning of the game, you are immediately getting like uh, insane value. Like you're basically saving gold by buying out this hero. Imagine. Um, really, really good. Then if you give him the cannon a few level ups and like a speedy unit, then he can actually clear a map just like Gurnison can. But he's gonna be doing it a little bit better. And what puts uh, Jeremy actually a little bit above Gurnison is actually his looks. Like, he's an absolute hunk, and whenever you have this hero portrait in your side of the game, you're immediately, like, plus two morale IRL. So, because of that, he's just a step of a Gurnison as well. So, there we go. Uh, so, next up is we have Josephine. I don't know why I hyped up this hero so much by saying her name. Um, she's kind of garbage. <laughs> She has like a very bad combination of skills immediately into the game. It's like sorcery and mysticism or sorcery and some other garbage. Uh, let me like double check what kind of trash she's packing. Yeah, sorcery and mysticism as I thought. Uh, being a gold specialist is, um, I mean, tower heroes are so bad that sometimes you actually used to big Josephine as a sonic hero because you used to get like two stacks of golems at the beginning of the game and that used to be the best thing you could actually get as a tower player. Um, yeah, that's kind of silly, but she's actually really bad. Because she provides with two golem stacks and she has haste, she's like, not like absolutely bottom of the barrel. And she used to be like a meta pick for some time as well. So she's going to be getting the low C tier instead of D tier. Um, there we go. Uh, next up is we have Colt. Um, Colt is uh, a planeswalker. So planeswalkers' uh, main uh, gimmick is that they're super inconsistent, okay? Like, they're kind of garbage in that kind of way, so you don't really want to build them too much. And also, especially if they have immediate... Um, especially if they have immediate learning. Learning is like the worst skill in the game after Eagle Eye. So, yeah. You don't exactly want Colt ever. Well, actually, that's not exactly right. Um, Tactus is always going to be useful, especially in a mind hero that has some mice as well. Free one at level 1, along with basic tactics, can get you to do, like, black towers pretty easily and other things. So you don't, you're not exactly super sad to see a cult, but, um, you never invest into it. It's gonna be, like, a slightly useful side hero, at best, most of the time. Um, next up is you have the really funny-looking Kilgore. I have no idea what he's uh, having this face like, uh... Like, he looks like an American trying to, uh trying to intimidate an Asian person, but doing it, like, super badly, and this is super cringe. Um, that's how Kilgore looks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Apart from his looks, he is actually really awesome. Um... He is a behemoth specialist, and a very good behemoth specialist at that. He gives you damage to the unit, and as we said, damage is, like, a really great way to scale uh, the unit. So, if you use Behemoth with Kilgore, they're gonna be absolutely dominating. He's a Barbarian, so that's already really good, and he doesn't have any bad skills at the beginning of the game as well, having only advanced offense on him. So, as a hero, he is actually at steer, despite his funny look. Yeah. Um, there we go. Next up is we have King Kinkaria! Uh, Kinkari is a learning specialist, so she specializes in the worst skill in the game. Being a witch doesn't actually, like, pay that much either. So she is bottom of the barrel, D tier hero. Real, really awful. Um, yeah. So here we go. Kinkari is Pog. <laughs> really? Wow. Um, yeah. So next up is we have uh, Korbak. Korbak is a Serpent Fly Specialist, that means that he starts off with two stacks of Serpent Flies. So if you get him ever, um, in a game, like with Army, in a Tavern, then you're gonna be like really, really happy, because all your heroes are gonna be medium speed 9, so you're really, really happy in that scenario. However, you don't usually want to main him, because he starts off with Pathfinding. Pathfinding is a skill that's like decent utility, but you don't want it immediately. You would rather want it later, or you want to solve your... You want to solve your terrain penalty issues in other ways, rather than by having pathfinding on your main. 
So Korbak is uh, at most a decent side hero, and also like a really good find in a tavern early into the game for some simplifies for speed. So that's all the credit that I will give him, and I would say that this credit pushes him to middle of C tier. Um, one of the worst Beastmasters, apart from Jerwolf. Wait, where did I put Jerwolf? Oh yeah, here, below. I, I just want to make sure that Jerwolf is below Korvac, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, next up is we have Krillian. Now, Krillian has a pretty unique role. One, he's a barbarian, so he's really, really good um, in that kind of way. But two, he has interference. Interference is usually pretty bad for early game. However, a Beastmaster can carry the early game without having, like, necessarily the best skills, apart from the offense that you get immediately. And because of this, he's actually very, very commonly used for late game in mirror matches, where interference is gonna be king. Like, um, Empty Jeebus, Empty Firewalk, Krullian, actually not Firewalk, because Firewalk has, um, Red Orb, so you don't want interference in that template. Anyway, many mirror templates use Krullian as a might main for the Fenalka, and, uh, he does a really, really good job in doing so. Krullian is one of the best main heroes in terms of taking a Fenalka, and because of this, I would actually say he's a lull S tier. Um, here we go. And by the way, why does he look like a Banshee? I never, I never imagined like an Ogre and a Banshee like crossing over. But if you were to cross over a Banshee and, a, and an Orc, then you would be having Krellian. He looks like he's absolutely screeching. Maybe that's how he's interfering with his opponents. Maybe that's why he has interference at the beginning of the game. So yeah, that's absolutely dreadful. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is Kiri! Uh... Kiri... Is, uh... Kiri's a hero that I actually used to love, like, so much. Um, when I started playing, like, online games, uh, I was usually playing, like, a lot of Jeebus Cross, and Rampy used to be my favorite faction, okay? Um, Rampy being my favorite faction, Kiri was the reason why. Um, Kiri can walk so fast, she does, like, so much damage on Raginus, she feels so good to use. Uh, she's absolutely awesome in almost every single way that a hero can be awesome if you also mind a metro free. With the logistics nerf, she fell out of favor and Eivor ended up being picked more often. I was really, really sad about that. And that's one of the reasons why I moved over to Castle being my favorite over Rampart. So, yeah. Kiri's still, like, really, really good, but not as good as she used to be. She's no longer queen of Jeebus Cross. Um, now she's just a water girl. Another water girl. Um, there we go. Uh, next up is Labifa. Labifa is very similar to uh, Grindon, except way worse. Because you have to RNG your way into slow from Mage Guild in order to be able to use her that effectively. Having Earth Madness at the beginning of the game, which is like, in most cases, the best skill that's available, um, is really, really good. But... Uh, not having any good skills, not having a good specialty, uh, puts her like a little bit uh, below some of the other heroes available. And I would say she is top of A tier because of this, rather than S tier alongside Grendon, who is very, very similar. So here we go. Say something bad about Kira, I dare you. Well, there we go. Uh, next up is we have uh, Lacus. Lacus is the better of the two fishers because he does not have learning and instead has advanced, off, uh, advanced tactics at the beginning of the game. Um, advanced tactics lets you reach like many units, so if you have like a speed 9 unit, uh, then you can already reach range units before the, I mean at the round 1 of the fight, which is absolutely awesome. So Lacus like heavily specializes in dealing with range stuff, and he can do so pretty much at the beginning of the game. It's honestly like pretty awesome. Um, however, being a planeswalker does not really make him into a good main anyway. And apart from the early game utility, he does not provide too much, so I would say that he is bottom of A tier. Um, here we go. Uh, next up is we have Lina! Now, Lina is really, really cool. She is the best hero for generating income. So if you're playing like a more poor template, a more slow place down, uh, slow pace template, um, such as um, HVDM1, 6LM10A, uh, these templates, uh, you see Lena, then you're like, oh my god, I won the game. Uh, she's amazing. She has both the gold specialty, plus 350, 350 gold, and she also has estates at the same time. The pathfinding is pretty good for her as well, because she's usually used as a side hero, and one of the best side heroes at that. She deserves a very, um, yeah, she deserves to be pretty high because of this very special ability. 
Um, and pretty high in my case, and it would be like somewhere A tier. Here we go. Uh, next up is we have Lord Heart. Honestly, if it came down to looks only, then he would be like heavily S tier plus, like one of the best heroes in the game. Like, look at him. He doesn't take shit from anyone. Um, however, in terms of gameplay, starting off with advanced necromancy and nothing else, as a death knight with a death knight specialty, is not really that good. He's kind of like a Charna, honestly. I don't like using him too much. He's pretty good in a necro scenario, like when you're playing like Necropolis, but in any other faction, wouldn't really want to use him. And there's better things to use on necro anyway. So I would say that Lord Heart is actually low B tier. Um, here we go. Next up is Lord Heart, the Betrayer, the Gold Digger and Gold King himself. Um, he has the estate specialty and he also starts with leadership and estates. Um, he does not just, he, uh, for a long time, he does not generate more gold than Lina, and of course does not generate as much gold as Lina at the very beginning of the game too. And he's not really as useful as a side hero that just provides gold as Lina anyway, because it does not have pathfinding or any other abilities that are really that good. So, yeah... Um, that's why we're gonna be having Lord Heart at, um, low C tier. I don't think he's a good hero at all. You don't usually invest into him, even if you don't really get that much of a good payoff at all. Uh, Lord Heart just kind of sucks, actually. Yeah. So, on, I was dealt like, quite a few heroes to go through, and yeah, very many awesome ones, see ya. Hell yeah, let's go! Uh, next up is we have Lorelei. Uh, Lorelei is a really cool hero because she has only harpies at the beginning of the game. Um, that puts her in a pretty unique spot where she, whenever you can roll her in the tavern or when you spawn into the game, she has more moves than usual. And if you're going to be going for harpy hugs, then you're going to be, yeah, very happy with her. Um, there used to be a meta in Heroes 3 where you used to go Lorelei as a main primary hero because you could cheese experimental shops and take like the biggest size XP shop with just some harpy hugs. Um, if you have, like, the plus one speed from Lorelei, it used to be absolutely bonkers broken. Uh, but thankfully, after the new experimental shop changes, that is no longer the case. So you don't have to wait for 20 minutes for the opponent to do that. Thank God, those were, like, pretty cancerous days. Um, yeah. Lorelei, is, as an overlord, does not really build into, like, too good of a main because she gets scouting leadership at the beginning. Which are two skills that you don't exactly want on a main hero immediately. So, yeah. Um, Lorley is gonna be low A tier, in my opinion. Providing good army, but not really building into too good of a hero. Uh, where's Lina? Can't see her in S tier. Uh, Lina is A tier. Uh, next up is Loinus! Now, okay, listen, I understand. Loinus is very dear and special in many people's hearts, okay? Um, having the prayer specialty immediately into the game, um, as a cleric you're probably gonna be rolling into water pretty easily, and you can expert prayer your entire army, and it feels super good when you do so, okay? Uh, however, having- being a cleric, and having learning, uh, makes him like a pretty awful hero, so despite the awesome thematics, uh, despite like the awesome nostalgia factor, I can't put him anywhere above C tier. Loinus is kind of bad. Like, you get, like, one prayer cast, and, yeah, that's your, that's your hero. Enjoy, <laughs> you know? Loinus, okay, one battle and then delete, yeah. Yeah. How's Gundula, not us? Uh, but, like, battle mages are... Yikes. So, next up is you have Luna! Ooh. Okay, so, Luna's a hero that, uh, that I specialize in quite a bit. I played Luna like so many times, I know like all her gimmicks, all the mechanics, um... If you're a good Luna player, then Luna is actually gonna be able to clear the entire map for you. Just having Luna alone is, um... Equivalent to have, having like so many things going for you. You're able to like cheese many many objects, you're able to like take fights that you otherwise would not be able to take. Um, Luna alone can, yeah, just like win your game, so... It's very very broken, very very good. Double damage on the fireball is just like super super powerful. So this elementalist goes into S tier, no doubt. She's a game-defining hero. As of the game defining, in the way that the game is played, and the way that the game is approached. She's so good in fact that she's actually very commonly picked even above Grindon, with Grindon being the the reason why conflict is broken. Well, one of the many reasons, I guess. Um, so yeah. Luna is absolutely awesome. 
absolutely awesome. Uh, next up, I mean, speaking of awesome, Malcolm is not. Uh, Malcolm is an Eagle Eye Specialist, Druid. And neither being a Druid, neither the Eagle Eye Specialty, neither anything in the spellbook can actually save him from being absolutely garbage, bottom of the barrel, the dear hero. Um, to the bottom you go. Uh, so next up is we have Male Kif. Now, Male Kif is... Is pretty bad actually. Um, he has the sorcery specialty, I believe. And sorcery, while good on paper, just doesn't really scale that well. I mean, 15% is actually like nothing. And because of this, uh, he's not really, really commonly used at all, unfortunately for him. So, with this in mind, he's gonna be like, he doesn't even start with a way to use the fact that he has sorcery, okay? Like, Alagar can immediately use the fact that he has sorcery because he has a damaging spell. Um, this guy can't even use it. Uh, sorcery mysticism. No, Milkif is, uh, sorcery wisdom. Uh, right? Yeah. And it's not off with blood love, so that's, like, inexcusably bad. So, yeah. Milkif at least has 30 mana. Wait, that's incorrect! What? He's a warlock. Warlock starts with 2 knowledge. So, not even that. Not even that. So, yeah, he's pretty bad. He is gonna be gone in... I mean, he's not as bad as some of these D-tier heroes. I'll put him at C-tier, at least. So, yeah. Milka form of meta and duel has to be at least B-tier. No, first of all, duel is only, like, small, pa small, small part of Heroes 3. Then second, he was only, like, in uh, one or two patches of that small part of Heroes 3. And third, he even on that patch specifically, he was still not the Cecilia the best, but only considered for some situations. So, yeah. He's, like, a part, a part, a part of Heroes, you know? Like, nah, that does not make him high. <clears throat> uh, next up is your man friend. Um, he is the fireball guy. He starts off with wisdom and fire magics, and he is a navigator. He's honestly... He feels, like, pretty good whenever you play him. He tends to roll for decent skills, and also the fact that he can, like, cast a fireball whenever you're gonna be taking, like, uh, some small fight actually seems pretty good. But not good enough to put him anywhere above C tier, but just slightly good enough to put him above D. Yeah, he's barely escaping D tier just because of that. Uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, next up is we have, um, Marius. Now, Marius is really, really good. First of all, Demoniacs, just generally really great heroes. Rolls for offense, rolls for logistics all the time, and so on. And next up, she is the Demon Specialist. So if you're ever going to be Demon Farming, then Marius is going to be, like, the best way for you to be able to do so. Because Marius gets, like, way more payoff from the demons, because she can, one, use them to tank Utopia so, like, super easily. Um, the extra stats actually matter quite a bit. And uh, the speed and utility that demons get from Marius is also, like, really, really cool. So both as a hero and as a and as the demon specialist, she does like a really good job in the game. You want to main her even if you roll her not on uh, demon strategy. And if you're using demons, then she's honestly like a um, step above. Yeah, then again, I mean even then. So I would actually put her like low, low S tier. Um, as a hero, she is almost like a little. Yeah, she's just like really, really good and very, very consistent too. Mm hmm. He's not as good as girlfriend. Um, that's okay. I would rather not have like a useless, uh, a full useless skill on my hero, you know. But um, okay. So next up is we have Melodia. Melodia is the um, fortune specialist uh, with luck and wisdom, and none of that is actually any good at all. The fact that she is a druid means that she has like a little bit of mana to use at the very beginning of the game, so she's not as bad as a heretic would be. But uh, fortune is bad, luck is bad, and uh, druid is not really that good on its own without something else to boost it up. So with that in mind, I think that Melodia is like a pretty bad hero. Top of D tier. Top of the garbage pile. Um, here we go. So next up is we have Mufala. Now, okay. Mufala is one of the best heroes in the entire game, okay? Like, um... Being able to tank things is usually more important than doing a lot of damage, because sometimes you cannot really avoid taking damage before getting hit. 
For example, when you go into a Utopia, you're going to be most certainly getting hit by the dragons before your vibrance, before your angels are going to be connecting onto the things that hit you. And Mephala is going to be shrugging these sets off and going to be like treating them like nothing. So despite tanking everything, she is going to be like super consistent across the board. Her, consistent, her consistency is even boosted by the fact that she has leadership, so she never skips a turn, she never takes damage, doesn't bleed army, doesn't lose anything, the best my hero in the entire game, she is the queen of the current Heroes Free. If you get her, main this hero, um, she is the absolute best, she is like an absolute beast, um, rolls good skills, starts with good skills, like is an absolute monster, even a step above... Um, Alkin and Craghack. She's absolutely awesome. Uh, next up is we have Rosic. I believe this is Rosic. Um, and Rosic, I believe, has Mysticism and Magic Arrow, apart from the, of course, Wisdom. Uh, let me double check. No, this is Marist. Um, yeah, I mistook him. Um, anyway, Stone Skin Learning. Um, this guy is really, really bad. Um, Stone Skin is not a good skill for you to stop with. And uh, learning is, of course, one of the worst skills in the game. And you're a witch. Being a witch does not really pay. So being D tier is, yeah, is where you belong. Probably, like, towards the bottom. You're not better than Cosmetra, let's be real. Uh, yep. Next up is we have Miriam. Miriam is a really awesome hero. Um, scouting and uh, logistics. Uh, she can travel far and she can see even further. She's a scouting specialist. And she's also a captain, so she tends to roll for, like, pretty good things as well. She used to be, like, a meta for, like, many formats for a lot of, a long time. And for a very good reason, too. She's an amazing hero. You want as a side hero, maybe as a main hero, or anything in between. She is uh, one of the best captains available, and a really, really good hero that used to be very meta for a long time. I would put her... Top of A tier. Yeah, not quite... S, I believe. She, if I did it like a year ago, it would probably be S tier, but right now I would say that it's probably A tier. Top of A tier. Uh, yeah. If that game is better than offense, then why do you all play players pick offense over armor? Uh, players pick offense over armor in the early stages of the game, because in the early stages of the game, you're going to be fighting lower tier creatures. Lower tier creatures are going to be like lower speed on average. Lower speed creatures can be controlled better, and you can hit them without uh, getting hit more often. When you get to later stages of the game, you're going to be finding things that are going to be like upgraded to 7, that are going to hit you no matter what you do. Things that are going to be ranged, things that are, you know, like utopias and whatnot. Um, so in the later stages of the game, armor becomes better than offense, and also offense just has like a higher number on it. Offense is 30% damage, versus armor, 15% like damage negation. So, yeah, armor outscales offense. Um, so yeah, that's why. <clears throat> offense is better to get the game going. So, and getting the game going is like a very, very important part of Hero Street. So that's why you usually pick offense and treat offense as a higher tier skill than armor. Uh, but armor specialty is way better than the offense specialty, though. So, here we go. Because specialty is all about scaling. And, uh, yeah. Mm hmm. So, next up is we have uh, Merlanda. Merlanda is. Um, She's actually very much like Adelaide and Atrel. She's like an open canvas to build whatever hero you want to. If you give her like, uh, if you go get her inside of like a um, magic university, you can buy her the schools of magic and then get her like a few levels. And she's already like a perfectly well set up uh, control hero. And very often times that is exactly what you want. So she's going to be going alongside uh, Astral and Adelaide somewhere here. I would say that's probably a little bit worse than uh, the cleric because the cleric can also g provide more utility by going for diplomacy whenever she needs to, you know? So she has more options. Uh, next up is we have Moander. Moander being a necromancer. No, actually, Death Knight or Necromancer? I don't remember. I think it's a uh, Death Knight, actually. Yeah, Death Knight, okay. Uh, one of the better parts of him is the fact that he has um, slow in the uh, spellbook, but that's not enough to carry him to actually be good. Lich specialty, kind of meh. Um, learning, super garbage, and he's also like a necromancer too. So he's super niche, and even in the best case scenario, he's still bad. So I would put him high D tier. Um, there he goes. 
Now, next up is one of my favorite heroes, actually. Like, one of my more liked heroes, not favorite, I guess. It's Munir! Uh, Munir is a Psychic Elemental Specialist, but that doesn't actually matter too much. Um, the thing I find is about him is that he has Offense and Logistics at the very beginning of the game, and these are two most sought-after skills in the early game of Hero 3, and he has both of them immediately. Um, of course, uh, Planeswalker suffer from being consistent, but even if you get like pretty bad skills on level ups on your Manair, you're still actually decently happy. So this guy makes into like one of the best mains in the game. Um, super good starting skills, and uh, yeah, he can zoom zoom around the map, killing everything from the very beginning of the game. Um, he's absolutely awesome. I would put him actually in S tier as a hero. He is super awesome. Like, very, very cool. Uh, next up is we have Meteor Drake. Now, her specialty, of course, she's a Drake specialist. Uh, she gives, like, uh, stats to dragons, 5-5, five, five, I believe. But uh, dragons are not usually that good in general Hero 3 gameplay. And even if, we're even if they were good, you would not use her with Meteor. Uh, because she's a pretty awful hero, starting off with the states at the beginning of the game. So she's neither like a utility hero, she's neither like a support hero, neither like a main. So she actually like does everything pretty poorly. As an overlord with tactics, she's not going to be going like to the bottom bottom of the barrel, but she is going to be like near the bottom. Uh, I mean, she's pretty much a Nerdamon. I would say that the free attack of Verdamon rather than the 2 2, I mean, free one stat line of Verdamon rather than the 2 2 of uh, level 1 Meteor. It's gonna be better, so... Erdemon is probably better than Meteor in most scenarios. Uh, there we go. Uh, next up is Nagash! Nagash is actually, very surprisingly, super awesome. Um, you see, Necromancer is... The best part about being a Necromancer is that you're almost guaranteed Earth Magics. Like, they have the most insane um, likelihood for Earth Magics to occur on the level up. And because of this, you're going to be almost guaranteed Earth Magics on, um, on this hero. And combine that with the fact that he has Intelligence at the very beginning of the game, you're going to be having a high mana pool and Expert Earth. What does that mean? Infinite Expert Slow. With Infinite Expert Slow, you can kebab your way for like very many fights, and you're going to be having like a really good time doing so. Nagash is amazing. Uh, one of the better utility side heroes uh, that is available in this game. He's going to be uh, middle of A tier. Uh, yep. Uh, next up is Neela. Now, Neela is an armor scholar hero. Uh, you see, Neela's usually, like, pretty cool, but she does not have, like, a certain identity. As a scholar, she would be better as, like, a side hero that's able to, like, just transfer some spells, and that would be it. But she's also, like, an armor specialist. And, as I said, armor specialty is the best specialty that's available in the game. And this specialty does not exactly, like, fit her. Like, she's an alchemist, so she doesn't roll for, like, a lot of Mindska stats. Then she also has Scholar, it doesn't really fit with that. She's good if you have, like, nothing else available for you, but she's not really preferred in most scenarios, because she does not have, like, that certain identity. She's not, like, a warrior or a mage. And, uh... You would think you're gonna be taking like the best part of every world of being like both a mage and a warrior, but no, they take like the wor she takes like the worst parts of like both worlds in my opinion, where she's neither one, not both. Yeah, sometimes when you try to become both, you become neither, and that's Neela. So I would put her in like middle B tier, not actually low B tier. It's nice, yeah, it's nice, but being just like it, be it being nice is not good enough. <laughs> then this is rigged. So he's gonna be coming. And Feral, thank you. Much appreciated. Then this is rigged. Uh next up is we have Nimbus. Nimbus is um well one of one first of all, Necromancer, Kick W. Um second, I think he has Stone Skin in the spellbook, Kick W. And then also he is <laughs> he specializes in Eagle Eye! What a loser. Like the probably absolute worst here in the game. Um even Malcolm is better than that. So yeah. Uh, next up is we have Nymus. Nymus is, I think, just a slight step below where Marius is, because one, she does not have utility of being like really good with demon farming as much as Marius would, and two, she ends up having like a starter skill that the demoniacs usually would roll for anyway, and doesn't have the skill that they would usually not roll for as much, which is the armor that Marius has. 
So despite being like uh, probably better than Marius on like the first few level ups, she very easily and very early gets outscaled by Marius. And yeah, because of that, she's still like okay, still like a decent main, but she's gonna be like high in the A tier instead. So there she is. Beatrice is not a wait, Beatrice should be. Wait, where's Beatrice? Wow. You're right. Anyway, uh, we'll see. Uh, next up is we have Octavia. Octavia is also a demoniac, and she's gonna be like very much like Mila, where she does not really know her identity. She's a scholar, but she doesn't have a book. Um, she has offense, but she has scholar, so what the hell is that? She is like kind of jack of no trades. Not jack of all trades, jack of no trades. She's kind of meh. On paper, she seems like she would be good in some scenarios. Um, also, she has like 50 gold specialty, by the way. And that is honestly like pretty awesome. Scholar plus 50 gold specialty is already like pretty good. And she has uh, she can take like a few fights as well. It's honestly not that bad. I would probably put her high ish on the C tier. Here we go. And next up is Alema. Uh, Alema, I think, is the ballistic special. I mean, she has ballistic, she is has weakness specialty, yeah. Um, yeah, she's just really, really bad. She just does not almost have any redeeming qualities. She has a bad spell, bad specialty, bad sonic skills, and also she's Soma like the worst class in the game. Stands for S -tier, right? Smile. Uh, we'll see, Madonna. Uh, I mean, you'll see. I know. I already know. She's not quite as bad as Nimbus, but, um, actually, Nimbus at least has two knowledge. Olama has one knowledge. Yeah, okay, somebody... Somebody took the spot for the worst from Nimbus. You know what? Congratulations, Alama. You're that garbage. Uh, next up is you have Ores. Actually, I think this is even worse. Um, another Eagle Eye Specialist. Uh, this time, it's a Battle Mage. And Battle Mages are really, really awful to you. It's really hard to decide which one is going to be the, wor the worst one out of these two. I think it might actually be Alama in the end. Wait, does Ores have any redeeming qualities whatsoever? Mmm... Protect from air. <laughs> it's even worse! Uh, battle may just tend to roll for better skills, but you're never going to be getting any level, so you probably should be treating these uh, heroes as if they're permanently level 1. And if they're permanently level 1, then a lemma is probably going to be a little bit better, because weakness could actually technically be useful, more so than protection from air. So, yeah. There we go. Uh, next up is Oren! Orin is the only hero in the game to have Archery Specialty. And Archery Specialty is actually kind of insane, because uh, Archery is like the highest number might thing that you can have in the game. 50% extra damage on your green creatures is insane from Expert Archery, and if you have like a level 20 Orin to double it up, you're literally dealing double the damage on every single one of your shots. Now, unfortunately, it is bundled on a Knight. And knights just don't end up being like super good heroes in general. So despite Orin having like a very having a very unique specialty, you don't usually see him being played that often, which I find kind of unfortunate. But it is what it is. Um, Orin is going to be low A tier. He's very unique and very awesome when you can pull it off. But usually you're not even going to be trying to pull it off because it's way too hard to do. So there we go. <clears throat> uh, next up is the worst of the two Psychic Elemental Brothers, and that is going to be Passes. Um, rather than having the offense uh, logistics that the Veneer has, this guy has uh, offense and artillery. Artillery is actually a pretty good early game skill if you can have a Ballista from other sources. And also Passes has like a high attack skill to be able to use the Ballista pretty good uh, uh, as well. She's basically like, I, she's almost exact copy of Ignissa. Except he looks worse, and uh, the specialty of... Yeah, the specialty is actually don't matter either. So, there we go. Pathfinding and artillery. No, it's offense and artillery on him. Her, whatever. Uh, anyway, next up is the Epic Drum. One of the Poposhka heroes of Heroes 3. Um, this Poposhka hero starts off with three gargoyle stacks. I say this in a hype way, but that's actually super awful. Gargoyles are like the worst uh, uh, unit that um, Tower has to offer. The only thing Gargoyles do is like tank for you a little bit, and they're also like a fast unit to give to your side heroes. Having more Gargoyles than you start with is actually completely unnecessary, and you don't even want that at all. So, yeah, Picodrum ends up being like super garbage. 
Um, he also has mysticism and scouting at the start of the game, which is not ideal for most scenarios. So being this kind of Papashki hero, actually providing negative army, literally negative army whenever he spawns in, he is going to be in the D tier. Uh, but at the top of D tier, I'll give him that much, um, uh, that much credit. Uh, next up is Pyre. Uh, Pyre used to be like really awesome in Shadow of Death, where artillery used to be like very valuable because you had to you had like way less army to work with in the early game. Um, and she also used to have, uh, I mean, yeah, logistics was way more broken as well. And being a demoniac, she would also roll for other good things at the same time. However, in Order of the Abyss, she fell down the ranks quite a bit. Artillery is not really as good anymore because it can snowball in other ways easier, so you don't have to you don't have to rely on the artillery as much. And also. Um, logistics got nerfed as well, so like both gimmicks that Pyre used to have ended up falling kind of flat. She's still okay, I would put her in B tier because you want the Ballista early on, you want like logistics on your side hero, these are not bad things, but if this was Shadow of Death I would probably put it in, in S tier. I want to emphasize that she fell a lot from how good she used to be. So here we go. Then remember the very first iterations of Jeepers Holocaust when players started with the uh, Picadrill? Uh, yeah, but that's because all the tower heroes suck, not because the uh, Pico Drum is actually decent, you know? Like, you have like so much garbage to choose from in uh, Jeepers Holocaust that, you know, the decision was pretty tough. Um, that is all. I always used to say that the uh, tower basically chooses uh, like two starting bonuses, um, instead of like a hero and a uh, and, um, starting bonus, so yeah. Uh, next up is we have Ranlu. Uh, Ranlu is a hero that replaces Galfran in any template Galfran is going to be not available in. Um, and honestly, he does like a pretty pathetic job in replacing Galfran. He is an artillery specialist that doesn't start with artillery, I believe. Uh, let me double check this. I almost never played this guy. He's kind of garbage. So, yeah. Oh no, he actually does start with the Ballista and doesn't start with Zombies, okay. So, not as bad as I thought, he does provide an artillery for your kingdom. And, uh, he's also a death knight, so he can, like, roll decent-ish skills, but honestly I don't really feel like he's that good at all. He's gonna be, like, slightly below the other death knights, such as Tamika, so he's gonna be middle of C tier. About there, I would say. So, next up is we have Rashka! Now... Honestly, Inferno heroes just don't have, like, a very clear identity, whatever they do. It's pretty weird, but Rashka is a demoniac that starts with Wisdom Scholar and no book. This guy devoted himself to, like, books and reading and teaching, but doesn't have a book to, in, the begin, in the beginning of the game. Um, he's one of the most jebade heroes in the game, where you, like, look at the hero and you're gonna be assuming there's no way this guy does not have a book. But then he doesn't. It's really bizarre, um, because of this, I would put him, like, really, really low, because... I mean, Demoniac is not bad, like, uh, Wisdom Scholar is not that bad either, it's like, beginning skills, but, like, package into, like, such a weird way, I would say that he is actually, like, just pathetic. Um, the specialty is non-existent as well. Um, he is gonna be D-tier. There we go. Uh, next up is Ryan. Um, Ryan is the cleric that starts off, I mean, that starts with a tent, and he's also, like, the first aid specialist. Um, first aid, pretty bad. Cleric on the sound without any sort of, um, special utility is gonna be also pretty bad. So, Ryan is at the bottom of the barrel. Not at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel, but, um, yeah. He's certainly nowhere on top. So, here we go. Uh, next up is Rissa. Rissa used to actually be the main hero on many templates for Tower, but they don't mistake her for a good hero. She used to be the main hero not because she's actually good, but because she's like the least bad out of most Tower heroes. Um, that is because she actually has a good skill, which is offense. She starts off with offense mysticism and also has a magic arrow to start as well, and also generates some mercury too. So she's actually decent. She's actually kind of okay. I would even dare say she is, like, B-tier. Like, pretty near Rissa. She has, like, more... She understands what she wants to be a little bit more than Nila, But Nila has more potential, so she's still gonna be, like, slightly higher, I would say. Uh, so here we go. Uh, next up is we have Roland. 
Oh, uh, wait. Roland is, like, literally a Sorsha. No, he is so No, I mean Catherine, by the way. Um, Catherine built with armor instead. Um, having armor instead of offense actually makes him, like, a little bit worse, but he's obviously, like, about the same. No, then again, he's basically Edric. Except that he has a specialty for Swordsman instead of Griffins, which is probably, like, a little bit better on average. He also does not really have, um... Yeah, he does not have a negative amount of army at the beginning of the game as well. So that is like a really good part of it as well. So here we go. This is Edric's spot on the list. Then next up is we have Rosic. Uh, Rosic is a witch that has uh, mysticism and also immediate magic error in his book. He's not really that good, but he's actually not that bad either. Like, he's at the top of the steaming pile of... Garbage that this is. Um, that's what I would say. Uh, Magic Arrow Heroes, I really respect them. Whenever you find them in the tavern, they're able to, like, just pee you some things away from the road and something like that. So, it's not too bad. It's pretty good. Then, next up is we have... Ryland? Yeah, Ryland. Uh, Ryland is... Uh, hmm. I mean, he starts off with diplomacy, and he starts off with the... the yeah, Diplomacy Leadership. It's not that bad of a combination of skills in some formats, but actually like very, very few formats. He also specializes in Dendroids, which is not good at all. So there's basically like no specialty. Um, mediocre at best secondary skills. Um, Ryland is kind of bad. You don't usually want to main him. You don't want to invest into him. And he's just going to be like a side hero that can take like a fight or two. Just because he has like some night stats because he's just a ranger. So yeah... Uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna be putting him somewhere in C tier. Um, there we go. Did you just so wrongly assume Rosic gender? I don't care what, I don't care what gender he is. <clears throat> so, here we go. We have Sandro. Uh, Sandro is of course the lore god of Heroes 3. Um, however, that does not get him to be a good hero. He is a sorcery specialist, necromancer, and he also starts off with slow in the spellbook. That's pretty good, especially because the necromancers tend to roll for earth magic so pretty uh, like very very easily. Um, so you're almost guaranteed the uh, earth magics. So then you also have slow in the spellbook, and you have like a decent amount of mana because you're a necromancer. Twenty immediately into the game. Um, he's honestly not really that bad, but not really good because sorcery is like one of the worst skills in the game. Um, with that in mind, he's gonna be somewhere a high in C tier, in my opinion. Um, there we go. Well, actually, fuck people up. Oh wow, 45% damage. Imagine, his implosion is doing less damage? He spent his entire life, like, well, probably, um, sitting, like, 10,000 years in a jail, uh, practicing casting spells for more damage, and he is beaten by a single orb of silt, like, one major artifact, in terms of damage. Imagine. How pathetic is that? What a loser. Um, anyway, next up is we have Sonia, another Eagle Eye specialist, Gig W. Um, you know, like a cleric, Eagle Eye. She does not really have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. She's really, really bad. And she belongs in the absolute bin at the garbage in the D tier. Here we go. Hmm. Uh, next up is we have Sorug. Um, Sorug is a decent... well, no, not really decent. Anyway, she has the gem specialty, so she generates, like, one gem per turn. And just because of that, she's obviously, like, pretty cool already. Then, apart from that, she has wisdom and interference. So, she has, like, the kind of, like, skill tree where she would be, like, where she would be built into a main hero. But realistically, you're never going to be building her into a main hero. So, she does not really have, like, a role... And she ends up being bad in both being, like, a good side hero and both bad in being, like, a good main hero. Uh, with that in mind, um, Sorug is gonna be, like, pretty low on the list. However, she's, like, pretty clean, she looks nice, and she also generates you something in the kingdom. So, I will put her not in the D tier. Yep. Uh, next up is Sephiroth. Uh, Sephiroth is actually one of the better heroes in the game. Um, sought after in many, many templates, such as H3DM1, 6 lm a and so on, MT Andromeda, whatever control template you're going to be playing, Sephiroth is going to be very, very good. Not only is she a top-tier mage being a warlock with wisdom intelligence immediately into the game, she also provides you with some crystal throughout the game as well for an easier mage build buy, too. 
Um, having all of these things uh, going for her, she's gonna be like about Dearmouth levels of power, but a little bit worse because she does not start off with as much mana, and she does not start off with as much knowledge and doesn't go for as much knowledge. Actually, she should be a little bit below Dearmouth. Um, so there we go. But still, solid 8 there. Really solid hero, honestly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> then, next up is we have Septiana. Um, Septiana is a hero that has, um, Death Ripple as a specialty, so she starts off with the spell and a Scholar. So she can teach everyone a uh, Death Ripple immediately into the game. And then if you have, like, a few fights, you can actually do, like, so many small fights, like, on turn one, by just, like, Death Rippling and then going into, like, um... Uh, just like a whirl whirlpool cycle by just like uh, passing the turn on the white in order to have like infinite regen regeneration at the point that the other things cannot kill you anymore. So Death Ripple is actually really, really cool in the game and it's very good for early game. So whenever you get to Fiona, you're actually able to like choose so many fights. She has a very unique spot in the game because of this and I personally really like her. Despite her having like a pretty bad skill tree and not being used as a main ever, I would actually still put her in B tier, low B tier. Um, there she goes. Then we have another Eagle Eye Specialist. And, you know, you're probably seeing a trend here by now. Eagle Eye means garbage. And this is no exception. Um... She belongs in the apps well, not absolute bottom, because wizards are slightly better than all these other classes when it comes to, like, Eagle Eye specialty. Um, you know, like, wizards get, like, more knowledge, more caster stats, and so on. So she is, like, slightly above the rest of these Eagle Eye folk. So, there we go. Hmm. So, next up is you have Shakti. Shakti is an overlord. Overlords are already, like, really, really good. Um, and Shakti provides a very unique advantage um, of three stacks of Troll Dice. So Troll Dice are, will... You basically get the a front Troll Dice immediately and you have tactics to use them as well. So you're gonna be able to uh, clear like whatever dwelling immediately with them. Uh, whatever like uh, Hive, Tier 1 Cons. Uh, you can do actually like so much with a Shakti, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, because of that he's very often used as a main. He's very often used... Um, Picked uh, as the starting hero of dungeon and so on. He is very solid. He is going to the top of A tier. There we go. Uh, next up is Shiva. Honestly, I didn't appreciate Shiva enough before I played Jiba Sarkas and Duel. Uh, but having a Barbarian that's already like a really good class, start off with offense and scouting, is actually very solid. She is, outside of Duel, she's actually not that commonly used. She is sometimes used for mirror templates, um, that's where she is used. She is a good side hero as well, and she makes into like a pretty good main too. She is not as good as some of the other ST heroes, however, she is still very very solid. I would put her as well at the top of A tier. Here we go. Uh, yep. Hmm... Sandro, instead of Sandro. <laughs> uh, yeah, fake smile. Uh, next up, we have one of the most unique heroes in the, in the entire game, and that is going to be Sir Molek. Uh, yeah, Sir Molek is, um, really, really good. I mean, he has, like, the most broken specialty in the entire game, plus two speed. Um, this guy used to be king in Shadow of Death when he actually used to be able to be picked in online games. Right now, um, he is not available to be played uh, in most some plays, but available in only some. If you could pick him, you would pick him every single time. Having her speed, I mean, speed is like the most broken thing that is available in Heroes 3. That's why haste and expert, expert haste and expert slow are the best spells in the game. And, uh, yeah. He would be at the top of S tier, of course. Not like the absolute top, in my opinion, but certainly like the top of um, S tier. Here we go. It's kind of ironic because he's fat. Yeah, because he gets his units to do all the running. Because he's good like that. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this one is gonna be Solmir, of course. So, this is one of the most iconic heroes in the game. Everybody loves him. Chain Lightning is awesome. The thematics of the hero is are awesome. And he looks like an absolute Giga Chab. The Lord of Brocada. Okay, the Solmir. You see... 
I used to ignore Stolmere, like, so often. Like, in my early days of Jubus Cross and early, my early days of PvP, I used to think that he's bad because you get, like, that one chain lighting and he doesn't really do that much more. However, I learned that I was wrong. Solmir is so much more than that one chain lightning. Honestly, that one chain lightning at the start is all already amazing, but if you invest a little bit into him, you're gonna be immediately able to clear like so many things. Solmir is amazing. Um, really, really good. One of the best heroes in the game, in my opinion. Um, he he's very meta-defining even. Whenever you find him in any sort of template, then you're gonna be able to do like so much more than you otherwise would be able to do. And for that, he is awesome. I think that he belongs in middle S tier. Yes, S for Solmir. He's awesome. I used to underestimate him, but no longer. No longer. I admit my faults, and I fall rise him to the place that he belongs to. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna be like uh, zooming out a little bit more so we can see all the heroes. Lord of Ricotta? <laughs> Ricotta, no. Ricotta. Uh, Lord, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay. Next up is we have Sorsha. Sorsha is uh, basically the exact carbon copy of Catherine, except that she doesn't have the curly hair. So she's clearly below Catherine. Um, here we go. A very easy here to, hero to tear. Um, yeah. Um, next up is we have Spint. Spint is another sorcery specialist, but once again, sorcery does not scale well in Hero 3. So, Spint is actually not really that good, despite having like a... I mean, being a navigator with sorcery specialist, it can be like decent, but it's not really that good. It's only going to be used for like pretty niche scenarios, like very, very specific ones. So, because of that, I would put him like in bottom of C tier. Uh, being like a navigator, he has like a little bit more knowledge than a Gerd would, so she's probably he's probably better than a Gerd, but not by far. Not by far. Level 30 spin from prison will fuck you up though. Yeah, but you know what? A level 30 nimble from prison would as well, so who cares, right? <laughs> okay, we have Straker! Now, Straker is a whole heap of garbage! Uh... He's a necromancer, that's, I mean, a death knight that starts off with necromancy as well as interference, um, to usually not sought after skills. Then he starts off with the haste in the spellbook. That's pretty good. Haste is pretty okay. Uh, but he starts off with three stacks of Walking Dead. And Walking Dead don't actually do anything. And um, you would usually want any other army, like literally any other army, any hero, apart from the Walking Dead. So he's like one of the worst heroes to ever get, either with army or without. He is certainly um, the laughing stock of Hero 3. Bottom of the barrel hero. I put him alongside the other Papashka Pickle Drum. Here we go. The dead tier. Yup. Uh, next up is you have Stitch. Once again, it's another sorcery specialist hero. Very much like um he's very very similar uh, to Spint here. And because of that, he's going right alongside Spin. I would say that uh, a navigator in this context is going to be better than a witch. So that's how these heroes are going to be placed. Um, right next to each other. Mm-hmm. Then next up is we have Sylvia. Wait, is that her name? I feel like I'm reading this name wrong. Yeah, it's Sylvia. Um, anyway... She is like a slightly worse Elmore because she does not start off with advanced uh, navigation and she cannot get the expert navigation as easily as Elmore can. So, yeah, a slight worse version of Elmore is gonna be not getting you a good spot in the tier list, unfortunately. Navigation maps are gonna be, I mean, a water maps in general are gonna be like not very common, and even in these maps, you're not gonna be using navigation specialists that much. Uh, with that in mind, you are going into bottom of C tier. And here we go. Jeebus Island hero? Nah, nah, nah. We'll put the second best hero in the, uh, in the game, D tier. Second best hero in the... Oh, this one, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, next up is we have the second most Jebade hero in the game after Rashka. What's her name again? Wait, how did I forget her name? Uh, Manticore. Sinka! Okay, so the problem with Sinka is this. She is a scholar hero. 
Um, and a scholar hero that's also put out a book just uh, ends up causing trouble. You want to chain some spells over to your hero, and then you're like, Oh my god! I don't have a spell book! Oh no! You know, that happened to be like uh, more than once, unfortunately. Um, I really hate it for the sake of it. I mean, because of that. An overlord with leadership scholar, but without a book, then also with a useless specialty? She has like all sorts of garbage. She doesn't know what she is, and I don't know what she is either, okay? Nobody can tell her what she is. Um, hopefully she gets over her midlife crisis at some point and like finds her role in, in her life. Until then, she is going to be middle of C tier at best. And the reason why she's even that high is just because she's an overlord. And overlords are generally pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, there we go. Then, next up is going to be... Tomika! Uh, Tomika is gonna be like, um... By the way, actually, I said Sharna's a, um... I said Sharna's specialty wrong. I said she's a Death Knight specialist, but she's not. She's a um, White specialist. Anyway, um, Tomika is the Death Knight specialist of uh, Necropolis. Well, the second one, after Lord Hard. Um, I mean, Lord Lich... Lich Hard? What the hell is his name? Yeah, Heart Lich. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, he's the sec she's the second specialist of Death Knights after Lich. And she's honestly pretty good at using Death Knights, and whenever you're gonna be using Death Knights, she's gonna be, like, decent. Actually, even preferred. But you're almost never gonna be using Death Knights as a main stack. Um, usually Death, Death Knights are, like, a supplementary stack that you use in order to just, like, tank some things for you. Um, that's why Tomcat does not really have, like, a very well-pronounced role as a specialist in that kind of way. So she's gonna be like slightly below Calavius because of that, because her specialty is not usually as applied and as good as the Calavius' one. But still, being a Death Knight, she's like a decent hero, you can main her, uh, you can use her as a side one to just farm some Skelly, it's gonna be okay, but it's not gonna be, it's not really gonna be that great, you know? It's not really that good. So next up is we have Tark. Um, Tark is actually like a pretty amazing hero, he starts off with offense armor, so, like, two best might skills immediately into the game, just like Alkin. And just like Alkin, a captain is going to be rolling the other many good skills. If he was available in the game, I bet he would be picked, like, very, very often. However, uh, being campaign hero and all, he's not usually available. He's also a Nyx specialist, so he starts off with, like, three Nyxes at the beginning of the game. That's insane. Um, so many tier 6 units immediately, he's going to be letting you clear, like, everything super easily. Um, yeah, honestly, like, a really amazing hero. It's pretty unfortunate that he's not available in as many spots as he is, um, um, yeah, as he is. So, yeah, he's gonna be, like, bottom S tier. And now, next hero that we have is gonna be Tazar. And Tazar is a fan favorite of many people, and for good reason. Tazar has the most potential to build into an amazing main out of any other hero. However... I would say that he's actually exactly right here. Top three. Um, he, while having, well, he has more potential than both Alkin and Mephala, he does not usually follow through with that potential because he ends up rolling to bad skills that Alkin and Mephala usually does not roll into. He usually does not get offense that Alkin has and usually, yeah, he just has, ends up being like a little bit worse despite having the most potential out of any hero in the game. Um, it's really, really unfortunate. Whenever you have the Tsar, he's really awesome to main, and if you can high roll him, then you're just, honestly, just cruising through the map. But, uh, yeah, the times that you don't, it just feels, like, really, really bad. So, here we go. Mm, yep. So, next up is we have, uh, Tarek. Tarek is actually a very unique and a cool hero. I like him quite a bit. He's a battle mage, so that is not actually very good. However, he has uh, tactics and haste in his spellbook, and he also specializes in the haste. Mean that he is one of the best heroes in the early game uh, that can be used to close up the distance between you and a range unit. And that's honestly like really awesome. It's a very unique utility that can be put to many good uses. And I feel like that's actually pretty awesome. I would put, uh, I would say that Tarek is best used as a side hero with a few levels, if you can afford it. And when you use him in that kind of way, then he is usually pretty low B tier. Um, one of the better battle mages, one that I'm actually usually not too sad to see. Um, Tarek is actually pretty cool. Um, then, let's go. Uh, next up is we have Bane. 
Uh, Thane is the genie specialist. Uh, the genie specialist, uh, Thane, has advanced uh, scholar immediately into the game, which lets him trade level free spells immediately, which is not very useful, especially because he cannot trade the free spells until he gets any wisdom anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of funny like that. Wait, I think this is the case, right? Let me double check. Yeah, advanced scholar. Uh, so yeah, you have to like roll into wisdom on him if you want to actually use the fact that he has like low high logistics. He's usually not really that good. Being an alchemist with a use useless specialty and like a slight utility secondary skill, he's not really that good. I would put him low C tier. Not completely garbage, but um, honestly, pretty bad. Pretty bad. And now we have Font. Wow. Um, this hero is very, very unique, because uh, whenever he's garbage, he's like super garbage and does nothing. However, when he's good, he's like the best hero in the game. Um, Anime Than Dead is one of the best spells in the game. It's like low tier, it doesn't cost a lot of mana, and it gives you like insane value. And you do not even need earth mana in order to make you a full use of it. Well, most use of it. So, yeah. Having font, it will let you do fights with, uh, I mean, with skeletons and or other undead creatures without losing anything. And that is honestly, like, super unique and very, very good. And he's able to do that from the very beginning of the game. And with boosted the um, Hora mysticism, he becomes even better. Because in a map like Sicilian where the towns are going to be, like, uh, few in between, you can actually just send him into the distance, and he's going to be fine. He's going to be recovering mana, doing five or more skellies, uh, adding them up, not losing them, and it's going to be amazing for him. He's a very, very good hero. And in tumblers where you can get him and use him, he's the absolute best, like game-defining even. Um, it's just that he doesn't really belong in too many templates. As a hero, when applied in his uh, current best context, I would say that he's actually low S tier, even. Um, yeah, that's how good he is. Despite having like seemingly bad skills, he's still very, very cool. Uh, next up is we have Theodorus. Uh, Theodorus is another pretty trash wizard that I believe has Wisdom Ballistics and pretty much nothing good in the spellbook either, right? Theodorus, yeah. Uh, magic specialty, shield in the spellbook, he has pretty much nothing to offer for you, okay? Like, absolutely nothing. Um, garbage hero, uh, belongs in a bin. D tier. Hmm. And next up is we have Forgrim. Forgrim is a hero that looks really, really good on paper. Like, um, he can uh, dodge all the spells, like, he cannot be hit by them, and like that, he's gonna be, like, pretty fine, right? Uh, but no, it uh, doesn't end up being like that, because if you play against Theodore, I mean... Forgrim, wait, I mean, Forgrim does not really provide anything wow. for you in the... A new tier list from our beloved Archholder, Lexia of Archholder. <laughs> Thanks, Paul, appreciate that. Uh, and yeah! Uh, this guy is just kind of garbage. He does not do a lot for you at all, unfortunately, um, in the early game. And in the late game, he can be cool, but once again, not really that useful. Resistance is just like 2 RNG, and you can play around it in many ways, like just buffing instead of like attacking and uh, stuff like that. Or summoning and resurrecting instead of attacking. There's many good spells that you can cast that will not be countered by foreground, and because of that, uh, having like a pretty bad early game and like a questionable late game, he's gonna be no better than B tier, in my opinion, despite being very unique and possibly oppressive. Uh, next up is we have Funner. It's a copy of Erdemon, so we don't really have to see uh, say anything much more. And uh, yeah, Magma Cool looks cooler than Stone, so easy decisions over here. And, wait, what is this hero? Wait, this is like the first hero that I can't remember the name of, after Senka at least. This is... Wait... Uh... Ra... Tiva, Tiva, Tiva! No, I, I would know Razek. Yeah, it's Tiva, actually. Oh yeah, this is uh, the Eagle Eye Specialist of Fortress. There's so many Eagle Eye Specialists in the game. I think Eagle Eye is the, is the skill with the most specialists in the game, isn't it? That's actually really whack, really silly. Uh, but of course, it's super garbage, so D tier. Here we go. <laughs> so next up is you have Torsai. Uh, Torsai is an alchemist. And a pretty cool one at that. He starts off with a ballista. He's a ballista specialist and also ha But does not have artillery. 
Whoa, wait, yeah, right? I believe so. Thorazar. Yeah, he's a ballista specialist without artillery. That's really, really silly. So he just, like, gives the ballista over to someone else and then just goes out and does things. However, he has a magic arrow in the spell book and also has uh, tactics as well. So he's, um, he can do, like, a pretty good black tower, uh, a dwelling. Um, these kind of fights, uh, small early game fights, he can actually do, like, really, really well and also provides a ballista to the kingdom, too. So he's actually, like, pretty decent. Whenever you roll into him, you're not really sad about that whatsoever. You're pretty happy to see him. I uh, will put him top of C tier. Um, here we go. Um, next up is we have the Big Daddy Tyraxor himself. And there's a reason why he's called that. Um, that's because he's a barbarian with really good sounding skills. And more so than that, um, a really good specialty. Usually, unit specialty is not really that good. Okay? Um, it doesn't provide you for much. However, um, Tyraxor is an exception. Because having Wolfie specialty plus one speed lets you outspeed the Wolf Raiders in the... Uh, in the pickets. So he can actually do pickets so pretty much immediately into the game. And he can do them very, very well. He also builds into like an amazing main hero too. So he's just like solid all around. A very, very good hero in many ways. He is going to be S tier. Um, amazing hero. Attack Zoe. Uh, yep. Uh, next up is we have Tyrus. Um, Tyrus is like a pretty basic knight, okay? Like, she doesn't uh, provide you with that much at all. She has leadership and tactics, and she's a knight. And that's like pretty much it. She can be used like as like a um, might hero to take like, some small fights here and there. But you don't usually want to main her. You don't usually want to invest into her. She's, um... I would say about... Uh, all about all the other knights. Honestly, all the knights are going to be like pretty similar in B tier. They're like middle of the pack. And for pretty good reason. Why is Alkan up first? Um, because Mephalox first, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's the S tier. I don't, I don't think Euphidon is going to S tier. Uh, Euphidon. So, this is the Ranger that starts off with Luck and Interference. These are not two very good skills, okay? And also, he is just like the other two Popashka over here. He starts off with negative army. Like... Usually, uh, Rampy Hero is going to be starting with Centaurs, Dwarves, and Elves. Um, Euphidon, on the other hand, starts with Dwarves, Dwarves, and Dwarves. Can you see how that's a problem? Of course you can. Dwarves are garbage units, they don't do anything for you, and you start off with a lot of them. It's honestly like a detriment, more so than an upside. So, yeah. He is absolute trash. And because of that, he belongs in D tier. Despite what Chad says, Euphidon is not S tier. Okay? He is garbage. But the world cries out for him. As you can see. Uh, next up is we have Yuland. Yuland is a ballistics guy. And ballistics is pretty bad. Wisdom is uh, average, okay. Um, but being a druid with ballistics does not really carry you like very far. He also has Cure. Uh, because is actually... Not really that great, um, as a starting spell in the spellbook. I mean, it's okay. Anyway, uh, Yulon does not go, like, very far, um, being what he is. So he belongs in D tier! Uh, yep. Uh, next up is we have Valeska. So Valeska is actually the main go-to hero for starting off a castle. Like, pretty much every single game, you're gonna be picking Valeska. And, uh, that is because she starts off with three stacks of archers. And that's amazing. Um, starting off with Valeska, you're gonna be having like, um, uh, 30 marksmen. 30 marksmen can almost do a, like a portal of glory immediately, can do a church shot by chasing the zombies. Uh, Black Tower is easy. She is game enabling for castle players, and that's amazing. You don't exactly put her, um, uh, you don't exactly expect her to be like an amazing, like, main hero for you. But, yeah, she does, like, a really good job all around. So she belongs uh, pretty comfortably into A tier. Um, slightly low A tier, though, because she's not as good of a main as uh, some of the other heroes. But her army utility is just amazing. Then, next up is we have... Uh... Wait, how did I forget her? Oh my god, these fortress heroes are killing me. Verdish, I think. Yeah, Verdish. I remembered. Um... 
So, Virtus is a first thing specialist, she brings a tent to the kingdom, but having only a tent as your only selling point as an entire hero being a witch is not good enough. To the garbage you go, into the bottom. So, yeah, there she is. Then, next up is we have Bay. Uh, Bay is very similar to uh, Sora, okay? She has, like, the identity of a main, because she has, like, wisdom leadership. So that's like the skill set that the main would have if you were to build one. You know, like some might, but you also want to have some casting. But being, having like yoga specialty, do nothing. Um, having like really low early uh, stats. It's just kind of bad. And with that being bad, you don't usually want to main her. And she's not really a good side hero either. So she ends up being like really bad in every single way, despite looking pretty clean. Yeah, she is surprisingly bad, in my opinion. So next up is we have Vidomina. So Vidomina is going to be your go-to farming, uh, skelly farming hero for Necropolis. She is very, very good as a main, because she always rolls into Earth Magics and doesn't have like any death skills at the beginning of the game, except for Necromancy in some situations being done. Uh, yeah, she's actually really, really great. Builds into good skills. Um, Sauce off really well as well, and has like a very useful and uh, thematic specialty as well. So because of this, she's actually going to be going a little bit above Isra. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. So, uh, next up is we have Vakayal. Uh, Vakayal is the vampire specialist that starts off with artillery. And considering that you need to like uh, to like uh, get a wooden stake across a vampire in order to like kill one, I feel like it's pretty ironic that Vakayal, the artillery specialist, is the vampire specialist. Maybe he can control them by you know like striking fear into their hearts. Um, I I don't really know how that goes. Anyway, wait, actually, am I right about Vakayal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, he's kind of weird like that. Um, his fanatics are pretty lame, and his hero is even lamer. He does not really have a good spot in the game. He's not entirely garbage as a death knight alone. Uh, but I would say that he is uh, bottom of C tier at best. Yeah. Where's Gunjula? Gunjula is high. M She's middle A tier. There she go. There she is. Then next up is we have Boy. Uh, Voy is a navigation specialist, but once again, um, like, navigation is not that relevant. We don't play that many water maps, and even if we do, um, these navigation specialists are not really utilized that much at all, in my opinion, from what I've seen, um, uh, either played by me or by anyone else. So, navigation is kind of meh, not like D tier kind of meh, but like C tier kind of meh. So she goes, like, uh, around the place of the other navigation specialists. Not as good as Elmore, but still somewhere there. Then next up is we have Wiston! Now Wiston is actually surprisingly really, really good. I say surprisingly because I didn't, uh, whenever I played the game, I didn't expect him to be that good. But Wiston always rolls for good skills. And you see, whenever you're playing a range pile stack, you have, basically, if you have archery, you're gonna be dealing enough damage, okay? Like 50% damage from archery is completely bonkers and insane. So you don't need that much attack skill. So the most important part for a range pile stack is actually to be able to survive. And Wisdom does exactly that. He has an insane amount of defense skill and he also has armor as well. Then he's gonna be providing you with logistics and earth matters pretty easily too. So I would say Wisdom is the definitive best hero in the game to be used with a range pile stack. So whenever you're going to be rolling him on castle or something, with marksmen, um, you're going to be like really, really happy. Winston is amazing, being the best ranged boss deck user. He belongs in S tier, in my opinion. One of the best Beastmasters, really awesome. And also picking many templates uh, because of his uh, free Lisbon stack immediately into the game as well. So yeah. 0-12 uh, Winston with archery. That's exactly correct! And you're going to be dealing enough damage with that, because you have archery, because archery is insanely bonkers broken, because it's 50%, and then you will never die. It's so good. Um, so yeah. Our next up is we have Zarfax. Um, Zarfax is a hero that cannot use the spell that he specializes in. Um, he specializes in Fireball, but can cast it zero times at the beginning of the game. 
Um, he also has leadership, wisdom. That's kind of weird. Um, honestly, heretics are so bad. Heretics are just god awful, and they belong in the dumpster. You can't even use the fact they think that you specialize in. Amazing, bro. Um. <clears throat> anyway, uh, next up is we have Zeron, the Devil Specialist. Um, this guy starts off with leadership and tactics, and um, honestly, he's really, really great. He's a demoniac that starts off with decent skills and has like an okay specialty for some of the games. He's very thematic, very cool, and can be used as a main. He's not bad, but like not really that good. I would put him at the top of B, probably. Yeah, top of B tier. Okay. Um, next up is we have Xai. Um, Xai is a stone skin specialist. It means he can actually provide with a lot of armor for your early game units. Um, notably, it's gonna be like the skeleton stack, which is actually kind of cool. But his skills are just really, really bad. I believe he has learning, right? Um, yeah, learning. And learning being the, bad, the worst skill alongside necromancy, which is usually not very sought after, uh, makes Sai into like a really bad hero. Uh, bad enough to be in high D tier, I believe. So there we go. Zero's Devils beat Archangels in a 1v1 if you attack first. Damn, okay. Then, next up is we have another heretic. God save us. Wait, what's this guy's name even? It's Zyron, right? Yeah, Zyron. So Zyron, once again, is specialized in a spell that he cannot even cast. He is specializing in Inferno, and he can, he can cast a, a, a total amount of zero times before running out of mana. It is absolutely awful. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say. Like, this guy... I mean, his skills are pretty decent. He has uh, leadership, um, I mean, wisdom scholar at the beginning of the game. With some levels, he can actually teach some spells around the heroes as well, pretty easily. But honestly, it's unacceptable for the zero to have like zero mana, specialize in something that he cannot use, and so on. It's just so bad. And uh, yeah, I would say that he belongs in D tier. Uh, next up is we have Yogg. Now, for some reason, well, Actually, for pretty apparent reasons, he's, like, very awesome thematically. Uh, you know, he's, like, a wizard that turn, turned into, like, a barbarian, and he's awesome like that. But then why did he go for ballistics? What do you mean? And he also specializes in Cyclops, like, bruh. Uh, the specialty is not really good, the ballistics is not really good, but despite that, he's a barbarian. And barbarians are worth quite a bit, even if they are bad. There's no such thing as a bad barbarian, so even he belongs in high... in like, B tier somewhere. So, yeah. Uh, next up is we have Zolari. Zolari, right? Yeah, Zolari. So, this guy has Interference and Wisdom at the very beginning of the game. So, he's one of the only... Ma I mean, he's one of the few mages that can have Interference while being a mage. Which is unique, and he goes, like, towards the side of being a main hero. But he doesn't do a good job when it comes to being a main hero. So, he does not really have an identity. He specializes in forgetfulness as well? But honestly, the only thing that he specializes in forgetting is what the role he has in this game. Because he honestly doesn't really have a well-pronounced role at all. So, with that in mind, he's going to be low C tier. Um, here he goes. Why are Barbarians good? Barbarians start off with a high amount of attack, and they go for like a very much of attack uh, in the early game, which is like the best skill that you can actually go for. So Barbarians are good in like the primary skill kind of way, and Barbarians are also really good in the secondary skill kind of way, because they usually roll for logistics, for earth magics, and other good skills, such as tactics, and they usually start off with offense as well. Uh, meaning that the secondary skill tree uh, for Barbarians, if invested into, are going to be really, really good. So that's why Barbarians are high tier. Mm-hmm. Then next up is we have Zubin! Uh, Zubin is a precision specialist, I believe. Um, yeah, precision specialist with artillery and wisdom. Precision is not really a good skill. Just a few, like, attack skill for your ranged creatures is not really that good. And he can barely cast it as well. Like, one cast for one turn. Wow. Um... Yeah, the artillery does not really provide you for much either because you don't have that much attack skill and so on. Zubin is uh, kind of garbage. Not as garbage as some of the others, but still really, really bad. Actually, 
He's like... Mm. Here. Precision? What? Yeah. And next up, we have Zydar! Um, Zydar is another hair effect, so you know this one is gonna be good, huh? Um, so yeah, he is specializing in sorcery. And honestly, sorcery is not really that good. So... Yeah, a bad hero specializing in a bad thing. He had like uh, a lot of garbage together. And a lot of garbage together does not make for anything good. So this guy is once again D tier. Uh, really, really bad. So yeah, that is that. And then we have this guy that is here due to a bug. Um, this is uh, Sir Christian, but he's like a lot more intimidating because he's, looking, he's judging you. Uh, we can put him alongside the other Christian, which is, if I remember correctly, in B? There we go. So! Um, that is my tier list. I think I forgot, like, uh, one or two heroes, by the way. Um, I don't know where Giselle or uh, Beatrice is. You were correct in saying that they are not here. Uh, Beatrice would be, by the way, A tier, because she has, like, a very unique role as a scouting specialist, and also being a knight, she's decent in knight. And then Giselle would be low S tier because she's very, very game defining in whatever template she is. One of the most impressive game heroes in the entire game. Um, and the very special list is like super, super awesome. Uh, but I don't know why I didn't get them. I went through like all the lists here, like one by one, and got all of them. I'm not sure where I went wrong. Anyway, I thank you all for watching. This was, uh, you know, my tier list of Heroes of Mind and Magic 3 um, heroes. Um, I tried to adapt this to, like, every single template. If we were to go template by template, it would be, like, pretty much, uh, I mean, quite a bit different, of course. Uh, but I really wanted to have, like, a big comprehensive list where I could talk about the good things and bad things about every single hero and, uh, and how I feel about them. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. <clears throat> that was awesome. And, yeah, till next.